Hey everyone, Chris here. An important note before we begin the show this week, one of the primary platforms we use for our podcast distribution, Google Podcasts, is getting shut down on April 2nd, 2024. While we are available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and plenty of other platforms, we want to ensure that you know about this in advance. Google has a simple export method for all podcast subscriptions to their replacement platform, which is YouTube Music, which I'll link in the description of the video below. If you are subscribed through this, we strongly encourage you to go through that guide if you want to keep up to date with all of our episodes in their traditional audio format. I will, of course, continue to post these episodes on YouTube in their video form after release. Thank you again for your longtime support, and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to 4Player Podcast. This is episode 789. It is April 2nd, 2024. I'm your host, Nick Henderson, joined by Brad Simons. What's up? Nolan Hedstrom. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Christopher Guthridge. Hello. And Christopher Davis. I heard from Reliable Source that 7 actually ate 9. Oh, God, what a... You, that's okay. You that had your chance. It was there. Of a I bad took joke. it. That was poor delivery of a bad joke. I agree. I agree with that sentiment. That's very true. Anyways, moving right along. Uh, before we get into the thick of video game discussion tonight, I want to very quickly because I was I should have done this at the top of the show last week when it was actually there was it was timely and now it's like down to the wire. I'm doing it this week, but whatever. If you use Google Podcasts to subscribe to our show, if you like listen listen to our show on the go using your phone. Like, if that's the app that you use, uh, by the time you're listening to this, it's probably gone. So I don't even know why I'm saying this now. What the fuck? April 2nd is the last day Google Podcast is going to exist. So if you're watching us live or if some, by some miracle you happen to get this before April that transpires. 2nd. This really doesn't need to be on this podcast. I know. I, I the, the thought is occurring to me late. literally in the moment. <laughs> and I can't just stop. I, I got I to gotta finish the thought. So the point is. Uh, if you if you use Google Podcasts, you can't anymore. So make sure you either export your subscriptions and take it to a different app, or just wherever you end up, make sure you subscribe to Four Player Podcasts. There, we would hate to lose your listenership just because Google. Decided but also, to be if a you didn't do that, you literally can't now. So get fucked. I mean, yeah, we, we don't actually know that. that like, <laughs> so I I opened the app a few minutes ago on my phone. And it says. Google Podcast is going by, and it gave me the export option. Like that doesn't mean that like tomorrow there won't be that option still. I mean that mm. could be true. That could be true, but I don't know what they mean by it exactly. So there is a chance that tomorrow when you open that app, it'll be like, "Psych, this doesn't exist anymore." I don't fucking know. Um, but just in case, just keep that in mind. Uh, this is maybe a message that's more relevant to the people who are watching us live as we record this on twitchtv slash podcast or our YouTube channel, because we now stream these shows uh, simultaneously on both Twitch and YouTube. So uh, YouTube keep that channel? in mind. For f- uh, YouTube.com slash four player. God damn it. PewDiePie Nolan. slash you PewDiePie. That. I'm so not used to saying that. Hold on. What is it? Uh, shit. We've only had this slash YouTube channel at long as I've been network. 
Thank, well, is thank it you. The number four or the number spell four? That? Number it's four. All, I wish I could say it's always the number four, but you know that story. We can't because we were dumb or because we couldn't back in the day. It's we're stuck with ah, whatever. The point is, go to fourplayernetwork.com with the number four. You can find all these links to Discord, to YouTube, to Twitch. It's all there, right at the top of the front page. So go check that out. But anyways, we're here to talk about video games. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about, we're going to revisit Dragon's Dogma 2, because uh, we talked about it last week, and Crispy's here, and he's been playing a ton of that as well. And we're going to talk Rise of the Ronin, because Brad's been playing that. Uh, I don't know if anybody else here played the demo for Stellar Blade, but I brought footage of that. That's going to be fun. You didn't get around to that. <laughs> you didn't play I'm it? Surprised. Nobody else played it? God damn. I saw some You're... pictures. Nick would You're play the Nick-ass video game? though. You're relying on me to sell. Pe- oh, I don't. Well, I don't know. If it's my job to sell people on Stellar Blade. It's just. Yeah, I don't think that's. You're right. I, maybe I shouldn't. Have, I shouldn't have framed it that way. But I just. I you mean know. it's your job to uh, to latch on to this one and the culture war that is Gamergate 2.0. You know, this fuck is your no. mascot. <laughs> oh, this okay. is, is that what Scott? No, fuck. First of all, let's not like start. Ask. Let's not suggest that because that's definitely not accurate but anyways well it is happening <laughs> right but it's not my, like it's not you're saying my if it wasn't for like sweet I, baby ink all our games would be this jiggly <laughs> fucking a you know what just this is maybe kind of relevant because i i kind of don't have any idea what you're talking about i that's weird. have taken steps i am no longer on twitter on my phone anyways i have removed that app from my phone so I have been really? the the amount of doom scrolling that I have done over the past few days has been reduced by like ninety five percent. I feel like you uh, still tweet more than anyone, like yeah. in in this. No, now it's going to well, be I in short tweet, bursts so. because I like I I I don't have it on my phone, so I can only check it when I get home. So I go do the you entire tweet the day. Podcast? I can't really do that anymore. Oh, shit. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a tweet real quick. But, but, but to be fair, to be <laughs> fair, I stopped doing that a lot anyways because Twitter is just a garbage site now. And what? No, you said that, but then I look on there and you're like posting porny artwork like every day and I'm like, wait that, a minute. No, listen. I I use Twitter in the evening. Like I, I, I use it on the desktop. Ooh. At it's night. I light, night. I light some candles. I light some candles and, you know, dim the lights at night. And that's when I use Twitter. But during the day, I have removed the, I have removed the, uh, the temptation to doom scroll. So, you know what? I feel great. I feel great that about this decision. Healthy. It is, it, it is, it is healthy, but man, you don't realize how kind of addicted you are to like doom scrolling until you realize you can't do it anymore. Uh, it's just like your your hand has the natural like whenever you have nothing going on it's just like we'll reach for my phone wait i can't do that anymore wait, no wonder man, you were doom scrolling you were you're following 2300 people yeah yeah i follow a lot of people <laughs> that's twitter man but also there's a lot of problems with twitter i fucking hate twitter but i also keep in touch with a lot of people via dms and whatnot so like I don't really want to just get rid of it altogether, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, getting off of off of Twitter like for ninety percent of my day has been kind of wonderful for like my mental health. So, highly recommend trying that. Um, but yeah, the point is, I don't really tweet the show very much on Twitter, but that's also because the algorithm kind of fucking sucks, and I'm pretty sure nobody sees like half of those tweets, anyways. So, anyways, um. Moving right along. Is fantasy there, uh, Critic. Fan- yes, there's <laughs> updates. Big updates. Big things happening, Nick. Yeah. Big yeah. things happening. I lost another game. Oh, big things. This was a guaranteed 90 plus. Uh, Wait, Earth you Blade lost another what? Got a f- I lost another game. Earthblade got officially delayed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Earthblade got uh, delayed. That was one of my uh, easy dubs, man. Easy dubs. I mean, nothing... Uh, like Celeste is one of the most beloved indie games of all time, though. There was no world where this game comes out and wasn't immune to the indie tax, and I'm sad. I'm sad. 
Um, also, I picked up a uh, Braid Anniversary Edition. Yeah, I kept I didn't my even fucking... see. I didn't even see the yeah, nomination I... until people were talking about it in our Fantasy Critic channel. Let me tell you, that fucking Fantasy Critic channel, I hate it. Because now that there's all these other leagues, other leagues, these other fuckers are talking about games that I don't want pe- that people to talk about. And I'm like, stop uh, talking about it. Like, even Bellatro was coming up before that came up. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. I still think yeah. the Wait. braid thing is bullshit. To be honest, yeah. How, how does that the not qualify as like a remaster? Yeah, we we cannot waste time. I know. I don't want to waste time that are long, long decided. Because you would lose the argument. Okay. Mm-hmm. No. Dude, it's... Shut the fuck up. It doesn't matter. Your argument. Look, if you wanted, you should have made a better argument at the beginning of the year when we all fucking voted on it. We'll have it again next year. No, you know, uh, prepare better. You know, at this point, because of the number of conversations we've had to have about. Which I'll be honest, most of these conversations center around things that Brad has drafted or or, or picked up or whatever over the past I, year and a if half. If you look at the fucking history, I did not even introduce I know, Braid. I Ed know. Did. I know. I know. But there's no but here. The but is you swooped in and picked it up. Yeah, I fucking did but, because I'm not. That's the thing. That's what makes it an even playing field. All of these games are available for everyone. I don't have to introduce it. Everything was a draft and everything is a bid. It's an auction, you know, which means, yeah, some games are going to be easier right. dubs than others. Just like your persona. What, or what, what is, look, what shit did look, you, I, 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 final whatever. fantasy. You said it here first. We can't have this argument on the show. We're not going to, uh, yeah, we disagree. That's okay. Games. Whatever. Let's move right along. Brad picked up braid anniversary edition. Mm, uh, Earthblade not, got all, not all games are created equal. Well, of course not. Of course not. But I, I at this point, I'm, I feel kind of inclined to like suggest that maybe next year, anything with the word remake, remaster, anniversary, something edition is. I think I feel like well, we we'll have the conversation when we get there. <laughs> but anyway, I think it would. I think it would have to be end up being a scenario to where we all have to agree to accept it. Well, of course. But anyways, uh, fucking anything else fantasy critic related? I think that's kind of. That's kind of uh, it, right? I mean, well, in our official league, kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, last week, yeah. I, I will encourage people, if you if you missed last week's show, go check it out. We did we did our first, like, community league check-in, uh, and we ran through all the existing community leagues and kind of looked at who was, like, the, 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 t- the at the top of the list and the bottom of the list of each league, which was kind of fun. Uh, we're going to try and do that every three months or so, so we'll... Check back in with them at the end of June, see how they're doing. But you can also follow along with all of those leagues. The links are in the welcome channel and Discord, so check those out. Also in the show notes. I put them in the show notes every single week. Also, Chris Davis, you motherfucker. You're the one, the only one who had picked up and scored a partial remake with Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. So you of all people should not be talking about partial remakes. No, but being listen, cool or not. listen, bitch. That, that... I, I, I don't understand this partial remake versus remake shit because okay. that Brothers Sorry. remake looks like way more of a remake than yeah. the Braid remake. Th- you know this, what I mean? Like this is where we get into like conversations about what's more valuable in terms of like new content and you know how yes. good is the new art versus you know I think that fucking Brothers remake kind of looks like shit. So what do you want from me? The point but it is, actually, it came out. He got points of all people. <laughs> that that was the only one game that was on all the fantasy critic as a partial remake when we made the rule i mean honestly uh, i think the whole partial remake versus remake discussion is just kind of one we don't it's, need to have now yeah but then stop bringing it back up remember <laughs> i was almost i was almost out of this conversation and you brought us you reined us right back in anyways um where do we go where, where do we want to go first tonight oh come on dude Who's been watching? Who here has been watching Shogun? I have. I have, dude. Fucking Shogun is so good. It's good. I'm, I'm not. I'm not fully caught up. I'm like on episode five. I think. No, I'm so not I caught up. I, I didn't even know it was not all done. I just started watching it. Yeah. I was kind of waiting to play Rise of the Ronin and watch Shogun at the same that's time a good, because I would imagine that's a good combo. Is a good combo. Um, what I didn't expect, Nicholas, is yeah. for me to be as fucking hooked on rise of the ronin as i am it is kind of nutty actually 
This seems oh, like shoot. a real turn. I've I've from well, your pre-release turn. impressions. My pre-release impressions. Well, I think everybody was kind yeah. of. Uh, Brad, you the, were kind of the mood on that, that game yeah, was. was very yeah. down. Oh, oh, well, when I was saying like th- this game is going to score like a seventy-five or whatever, that was me reading the tea leaves and with critics. It was not me thinking that this is a game that's going to deserve a seventy-five. It's just we were living a, in a world where uh, Dragon's Dogma scores an eighty-nine, which means we're living in a world where a bog standard open world checklist. Ubisoft knockoff is not going to score even close to that. It's going to score more like a 75. And you know what? I'm not like too mad at the critics here. Here's the, here's the thing about rise of the Ronin. Um, let me pull up some footage here or the footage. Sorry. Uh, this is a departure for team Ninja team Ninja who has been making uh, souls likes ever since Neo uh, I'd say like Neo sort of kicked off like the modern era of, of Team Ninja. Team Team Ninja, and they've done two Neo games. They did the strain that Strangers of Paradise. They did Woe Long Fallen Dynasty. Oh, I forgot and, about Strangers of Paradise. Yeah, but see, all of those are are Souls likes, um, like fr- from the level design to like the combat system and whatnot. And um, you know, Rise of the Ronin is not a Souls like at all. This is a this is their take on you know like an Ubisoft uh, open world uh, action you know adventure game whatever right an Ubisoft game it's a fucking checklist game and let me tell you checklist uh, stress the word checklist because it is one of those it's like a, you open up your map there's icons all over the map you know go to one of those icons and do like one of these activities that the icon you know suggests you know yeah do you remember a couple weeks ago when I just kind of jokingly was like is this going to be the days gone for me of 2024 days gone for you i I saw multi no no no, just in terms of like because you know it's it's, if it was like looking like it was going to come out and get like sixes and sevens but it was because it was one of those kind of traditional checklisty open world games that i was like i if i let myself try this game am i going to fall in love with it and suddenly champion this game i saw multiple people post-release multiple people post really started tweeting uh-huh. about this with the the box art for rise of the ronin right next to the box art for days gone and i was like I think this might be <laughs> I mean, accurate. Okay, okay. well let, let me talk through it and you decide first of all i'll say like this is not like first of all this score does it have a motorcycle gone, at least so fuck you uh, second of all no but you have a horse a horse that, wait what did that you just controls- say about days gone not like a horse, not even like a motorcycle. This horse might as well be a fucking skateboard. Like they, they, <laughs> they have n- never seen a horse in real life. They have no idea how to animate a horse, but that's okay because it, it doesn't work at all like a horse. It's it's extremely like um, controllable. Like it's just it's it's not it's not a it, you know it's the opposite of the horse from Shadow of the Colossus, right? But that's okay mm. because the whole like theme of this game is we're gonna make an open world you know one of those the movie soft checklist games a bloated one but you know what you're not going to feel the bloat we're going to streamline this thing and make it as user-friendly pleasurable quick snappy like get in there get out like nothing waste your time in this game at all this is the leanest fucking open world game i've seen in a very very long time um and, but it does feel dated, kind of like how Final Fantasy Rebirth felt dated because it's like, OK, well, they clearly don't make these games very often. And maybe somebody on the team played, you know, Assassin's Creed uh, 3, like, like all those years ago. And it's like, I know how to do this. This feels dated, right? Like a modern a modern uh, open world, you know, game is very, you know, they're 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 they're, they're very Witcher three-esque now right where it's like they're like prestige games you know they're fancy even even like the assassin's creed ones that are really bloated and people get kind of sick of them and like uh you know this is never ending shit like this this doesn't feel like that um it feels more like the games they were making you know 10 years ago this is one of those they don't make games like this anymore well i mean that that's fucking true but like so does Rise of the Ronin like deserve to to get a seventy six? Well, since all, everybody on the planet hates this type of game now, it makes sense. Um, 
it's also this is not a, like a very innovative game it's not an ambitious game there, there's nothing you're gonna do out in the world that's gonna like you've never seen before in terms of like game design you know like, what that's the, something you can't say about days gone the oh, shut the fuck up about days gone hold hang on um, <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> it's 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 very like um as an open world game, it is very kind of bog standard. But like, and I can't stress this enough, like the fast travels quick. The horse resp- responds like super quickly. You can go from your horse to your hang glider, back to your horse. You just whistle in the air and you'll just drop off your hang glider and land on your fucking horse and never like skip a beat. Like this like game real life. is trying to be like as, and I, I don't know if it's trying to be that or if it just is that, but it's very respectful like, of your time. Like, maybe I don't know. <laughs> respectful of your time but like not even i don't even think it's it's like actively trying to be respectful it's just it's not filled with like bloated tedium like you get in you get out and and it's not it's not super deep but it is like this game it's fast it's breezy this game is incredibly addictive i played over 30 hours of this game in a holy week, shit which is more than i played of dragon's dogma which is also very addictive and that's because you could just go 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 done with this mission upgraded this shit go 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 it's fa- like it's addictive like i think open world games used to be before they got really bloated before you started slowly climbing through cracks and climbing up walls and having conversations with atreus and and <laughs> i mean I I feel the tedium sometimes when I play these games. This one, there is no tedium, but hmm. it's ugly. It it is well, it is it is sort of ugly. actually. Like, I, like, I it, did want to ask you that because if you like, if you are like a like a graphics hoe bag, like you're probably going to be like mm, Ghost of Tsushima is so pretty, and this is not. And like, sure, that's fine. This is Team Ninja, who uh, you know puts out like a game every every uh you know 18 months i, I get don't it. think like like like, like it's, it's it's this thing isn't three hundred thousand dollars and and i get it it's never going to be that pretty like the assets are like repetitive too you know it's not just like tech wise like pretty dated but it's also you know they're stretching you know it's like a yakuza game right like, like in Let's terms of like they could have production released... values they're str- they've str- they're stretched pretty thin they could have released um, this on last generation's hardware without any issues you know is, i think feel like that's issues? kind of no what because it would have run like shit that's the thing this is not like this didn't have like a year and a half of polish to make sure this thing runs like perfectly you know you get into yokohama and it's it's a little like dicey like frame rate wise it might look dated to you but you know this is still team ninja and like they've never done an open world game but like let me tell you they kind of like knocked it out of the park because they ended up making one that's just incredibly like addictive and just fun and uh, so fun this is still a combat game at its core it has ninja guide i mean it has a team ninja like combat design and i was worried about this thing it was one one of the things i was worried most about because i think neo neo 2 especially are like incredibly deep like uh you know action rpgs i think they're i I think combat wise they're far deeper and, and more fun to play than like even like the best souls games i just love those games and i and they're far deeper as well like like there's so many different weapons and like the amount of depth that they put in a single weapon in those games was incredible Wo long really streamlined that game and tried to make you know their own take on like sekiro kind of you know uh it was but and i was worried that they were they were going to keep going in that direction up until i started playing it and i realized this is actually a much more fun deeper combat experience than Wo long i really like the combat really in this game. it's it's not neo but like some of the stuff they're doing in combat is really cool really smart there's like a ton of different weapon styles and like each like weapon um like like each given weapon in a given weapon stance is not like the deepest thing in the world you know you'll have uh your basic combos you'll have your counter and every weapon has kind of like a different style of like like counter move sort of and then you have your your martial arts which are like up to four face buttons as you progress through the game that are tied to that weapon stance but weapons will have multiple stances that by the way you can earn by tracking down certain like like difficult like fights in the world and learn like a weapon style from them which you know like 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 the whole the whole loop of like everything in the world uh feeds back into like the systems of like you know leveling up your character and your stances and getting new weapons all part of this like really addictive hook, this really addictive loop. But um, so so, you know, so I will you, say that's something so that you like, unlock, 
like the like Katana late has generation like Assassin's Creed games have done. Like that is one thing that like this is maybe learning from a little bit. I mean, not exactly the same, but like everyone likes to shit on those like you know Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla Assassin's Creed games, but that's a, that was a huge part of the loop. Is like how all the things that you can do out in the world feed back into yeah, growing yeah. your character, which is which is good design. Fun. But like, but like, imagine if you can get you know in and like get the the that that uh, new uh, weapon stance, and it only wastes five minutes of your time instead of like a forty five minute like thing that drags on and on and on. And by the way, go enjoy the next one. Like like it's it's back to the combat system like the katana has like nine different stances no other weapons like that but like you you learn these different stances and they're completely different move sets for each stance so a single weapon has like the, the has like multiple stances you can you can learn and you could sw- you swap them on the fly not only can you swap them on the fly not only do you have moves that kind of link those together and get key back and there's like key pulsing a lot of that stuff from from like neo's back but you have um uh, there's like a priority system, right? Like there's certain like weapon types that are like weak or have advantage to other weapon types based on like your stances. So sometimes you'll be like, you know, it's very common. You'll be like fighting like three different dudes, but like he'll be using a weapon type that, that, that one of your stances might be like strong against or uh, while the person next to him has a stance uh, using a weapon type that, that your st- current stance might be like weak to. So like you're, you're it, it, instead of like uh, focusing on like one single enemy, it's more like juggling uh, uh, like, like, like fighting three people at once or whatever. Right. Which, which I, I feel like this, this is sort of the aim of this game versus like a lot of souls likes where like, if you're in a situation where you're fighting three things at once, you just need to get the fuck out of here. This is more about like those sorts of encounters. And like, they do some really cool things to, uh, to make that work like, like you have um interactivity you know with stuff in the environment you can like pick up stuff and like throw them eventually you can upgrade your grappling hook to even throw people who are in like a weakened state at, at each other you have um uh you have have like uh sidearms like like like, like ranged weapons in neo the ranged weapon is like the thing you you rarely pull out to like help pick pick off an enemy from afar but now they're like more integrated into combat because this is like the bakumatsu era where like uh the west is like very much like like up in japan's business and like you know like like one of the weapons you you have is like a bayonet um and and you know you're using like revolvers and shit too um and and like the the way they integrate that stuff in combat is like really cool and smart. Like I have a flamethrower uh, <laughs> that you you'll see later in the footage, and it's like I don't know. I just, it's just a cool mix, kind of like uh, Yakuza Ishin, I guess, was a similar pe- era period because it it had some of that stuff too. Um, and there's stealth, like 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 the, like the oh so there's they're stealth in the game. So so just what do you expect in a bog standard open world? You expect like sort of taking out uh, encampments, right? And like, it's really fun in this game, right? Because it, unlike a Souls game where you're just, you know, it's it's like a handcrafted level. And I do miss that sort of level design because uh, I think Neo was like pretty good at that stuff. You know, it's they weren't from software, but like that type, type, type of level design and encounter design and like, you know, unlocking like shortcuts and stuff. That's just, just good. That's just peak fucking level design these days. This ain't that, but like taking out, you know, an encampment and like Far Cry can be really fun, right? And it's fun here because this this is the first time where I think they're in a long time, I guess, that they're actually like pulling off stealth. Like Neo, there's stealth options, Wolong has stealth options, you know, but it wasn't like here. Now it feels like a more well designed like system of of like sneaking around and like, you know, engaging, but then re engaging stealth, you know. It, it it's definitely um they're good at that. They're 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 good at like sort of that stealth approach encampment approach or just kind of go in guns a blazing because the combat support it like like this is like a kind of a dated assassin's creed game but with really really fun combat like like the maybe maybe when you're out in the open world like it's not the prettiest game because the tech ain't there but like they're really good at fucking combat animations and like death animations and like uh your like death blow moves like there are so many different animations for how you can like kill someone uh in this game it's amazing and they brought back like the um like the like a 
Neo and Wo Long, when you kill things in that game, like they just they're pinatas of loot and, and particle <laughs> effects. They just sort of like burst into colors when you kill them. But in this game, it's more like an old Ninja Gaiden game where you're just slicing fucking limbs off and shit. And it looks and feels good, especially when there's so many damn weapons and so many different like death blows for each given weapon. It just feels fucking good to slice someone up. And they do that thing where even after you like fucking cut off like like they're dead basically you just sliced off their head and their arm you can kind of keep slashing them up a little bit um it just feels good it feels good to monster fucking cut dudes right, up in, the, in this game okay. so like uh, well no i mean it's it's it 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 just it fucking looks good and feels good right it's sort of that uh f- fucking samurai fantasy you know that you one of the katana stances is the um the uh what is it called? The EI stance uh, where, you know, it's, it's all about sheathing your sword and like pulling it out really quick. And and you have a move where you like, uh, will sheathe your sword and you're kind of charging it up and you'll dash through an enemy and you'll like, sl- you know, all the slices will happen like after the fact, you know what I'm talking and about? Like, and then they'll of, like fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you actually do it, when Classic. you get a death blow, they'll like behind you, they'll, they'll, it'll dice them up. It's fucking cool. Um, uh, What's it called? The E I E I O C. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's actually um, what I was saying. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. So like, so what you yeah. have is like a game that is not what the fuck. That is a flamethrower. Sorry. <laughs> that is not gonna like win any. I mean, this is gonna be no media outlets game of the year. No self-respecting media outlet can 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 award a game that's not doing anything like innovative. But like, what Team Ninja managed to put out is is maybe a data looking game, maybe a, a data game like structurally, but it is got like peak fucking fun combat and it's like snappy and responsive with no, no fat. And, and I guess I'll just end by saying like, like, let me tell you team ninja again, team ninja is a, is a developer that I have disrespected for a long time in terms of their storytelling chops. Keep in mind, remember, must I remind you that these are the people responsible for Metroid other M and other tragedies. I've never cared about the story in like any old team Ninja game, Neo, like I've never cared about the story. They've never made a good story. story. Period. they, 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 they went all out. It's actually good. This is this is sort of like historical fiction, Shit. right? This is a very grounded story. All of these characters are like actual like historical figures or and I it's, feel vindicated. It's fucking it's good. It is think, good. Now I'll say this. You should play in Japanese because in English it's a lot of like bad, you know, accents and stuff. It's it's not good. I don't like what they did. Um <laughs> so if you sensitive I to that, think Brad's just, having just a stays gone moment. Switch switch in, switch to Japanese. No, because this shit ain't going to end up on my top 10 list of all time or anything. It's not that kind of game. You don't know uh, It's that. not even a game that I think people should rush out and buy because there's so many like games that are going to win the Game of the Year award, right? Like, play your Dragon's Dogma 2 because you waited 12 years and it's doing crazy shit, right? Play your Rebirth because it's your dream remake, you know? Play your Bellatros and your fucking... I mean, there's there's so many banger games this year as your Yakuza's. But, like, when this shit goes on sale and you're done with some of those games... I recommend anybody to pick this up because like this shit is fun and it is addictive and the story is actually good. Like Teen Ninja, and I think it's probably because they're taking it seriously and it's Japanese history and they want this shit to like be like, the, like there's dev diaries of like, they took this shit really seriously and it paid off. And again, it ain't Disco Elysium, but like there's a companion system and there's a faction system. You know, you can be pro Shogunate or anti Shogunate. And like you, there's all these different characters that you can do side quests for that, that, that you bond with and you have and become your companions and you unlock stuff as your bonds level up. But like those characters are actually good. Uh, uh, or, you know, some of them are really good, but then, but then there's characters on like the pro Shogunate side that are like, like shitty, like Westerners and that are, that are siding with like, the japanese government and you don't want to like in terms of like the main story i would never side with them but because there's so many characters that are tied to like the pro shogunate faction that are cool that i want to increase my bonds with not only because like their characters are cool and their quests are cool 
Um, but you know, and I'm getting stuff from leveling up their bonds. Uh, you know, it's content that I don't want to miss because they're, they're make it's, it's actually pretty good, <laughs> but it is dicey because I'm like, okay, your, I'm going to, I'm going to go pro U S imperialism. It's, it's well, not in terms of the main story, just in terms of, I want to do all these side quests because these characters are really cool. And, and, but let me tell you, it, I, it's led to situations where like, we're like my homie, like, like, like we're die, you know, we would die for each other in terms of the main story. We'll like show up at the end of like one of these side quests I'm doing for like these pro shogunate like assholes or like on what, like Matthew Perry or whatever. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And all of a sudden, like my homie will be like the boss of this stage um, hmm. that because, because like I should not be like running quests for this dude that i'm basically <laughs> like i'm trying to You're play working both for sides the bad to, guys i'm trying to play both sides to to see the most <laughs> amount of content but it's run, i'm running into these situations where like dude like the, at the end of a mission i'm having i'm having a boss fight with my homie and they're like dude we need to go back to the base because we got to talk about this shit that was fucked up yeah <laughs> and it's like hey. it's like this is cool like th like there's a dialogue system uh you're you unlock like dialogue skills in a team ninja game i'm putting points into 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 skills to conversate with people which let me tell you i have never wanted to conversate with anybody in a team ninja game but they they, they pulled it off like this hey. shit is surprisingly good Brad, for the sake of, of people in chat, I'd, I'd like to back up a second. Cause some people yeah. heard you mention Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry, yeah, historical figure. Open a book, guys. Come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't. There we go. It's a historical yeah. figure. Histor people are very historical. Commodore, uh, Perry, Commodore Perry's name is Matthew. Is that true? Yeah, Matthew Perry. Voiced by Matthew huh. Perry as well. Weirdly. Matthew there we go. Perry. Rest in peace. Yeah, that's <laughs> a <just>, sad. Uh, <laughs> Commodore Matthew Perry. You know, which is, which is, you know. Oh, he was a member of the Perry family. This, <laughs> this game assume. will That's go down. Says under lineage. <laughs> this game will go down real smooth. It, it, and, and let me tell you, they want everyone to play and enjoy this game. There are difficulty options. You know, a Team Ninja, you know, the Team Ninja put out a game like, well, granted, it's not a Souls-like game anymore, but you know. There's difficulty options again, and if you really want to just experience the story, which by the way, it's good enough for that now, you can just play on easy. I'm Did playing you on say the default difficulty, difficulty I, options. I could probably play this on Twilight and like be stuck at a boss like for ages. And let me tell you, I get into the dojo battles, and those can be extremely tough. But outside of dojo battles, um, you know, I'm kind of breezing through this game. You know, I'll die plenty. You know, it's 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 still one of those games where you fuck up enough. Uh, Perry's and stuff. Uh, you're gonna Matthew get fucked Perry? up. Um, <laughs> but you know they give you like way more healing items than any of those games. Like, like this is just a fun, breezy experience, which is still enough like combat friction and whatnot. But but no open world like like progression friction at all. This thing goes down smooth. Uh, I like it a lot. Like I'm glad lot. to hear it. I'm glad to hear now, it because it's not, I already tell you, I ain't gonna be my game of the year. Maybe That's it deserves. Fine. A seventy six on Metacritic Again, or whatever the fuck. But you know, I feel you, like I popped I feel like into forums, Reddit threads. <laughs> what? This ain't about you. Shut up. I <laughs> I popped into into like like uh, Reddit threads and YouTube comments and like and like and like forum threads and stuff. And you look at like user reviews, like across the board, people s seem to be having a great fucking time with this game. It's it's insane. Like, like the comment I see most often is like, I'm really surprised at this game's scores because I'm having so much fun with this game. I, I think uh, there is, there's, there's, a, there just needs to be, an, I mean, it makes sense when you think about it because critical scores not, are not necessarily there to, they're not entirely reflective of like how fun or enjoyable a game is. But like, you, like you said, like if it's a game that doesn't do try anything particularly refreshing or new and it feels it feels dated in a lot of ways like muted scores like that i feel like they they make sense um yeah. also like a lot of people myself included jokingly kind of hounding on the way this game looks because and i think it ha a lot of it comes down to the fact that just obviously like i'm watching bread run around this world and it's pure chaos you know what i mean like there just isn't a lot of um like they obviously prioritized 
ease of movement over like how pretty animations can be which we've had that conversation before and that's mm-hmm. fine but like and and it may not look like ghost of tsushima because obviously budget's a lot smaller it's not you know sony first party that kind of thing but like i feel i'm watching this and i was like i don't th- find this game to be quote unquote ugly i just don't i just don't think it's necessarily going to be living up to that if you're if you're thinking ghost of tsushima it ain't that but that's fine. Yeah, I mean, not not yeah, every game's gonna. You're not, you're not picking up this game to. I this I went a really it's awkward scenario too when I recorded this footage because I basically hundred percented the first map. You know, I'm thirty hours in and I just got to like the second map and there's three maps in this game and I'm in this part where like in in, in the new map I have to only do like story content and I just kind of want to run around the world and glide around the world. But so I had to go back to the original map and where I d- kind of done everything. So I, I couldn't do any of like the cool like fugitive fights or whatever but so it was a little awkward but we got there um i don't know i'm just having having a good time i'm not saying run out and buy it but i think i will if you've ever enjoyed this kind of game if you've ever enjoyed like like that sort of good like team ninja combat like i think this is an easy pickup when you find it on sale or when you have some free time i will happily place this on the top of my uh my waiting for a sale pile with alone in the dark after last week Mm -mm. The drip is good in this game, man. The drip. The drip, the drip is the good. The drip. Uh, you know what else has good I, I drip? I hope it's better than what you're wearing. Shut the <laughs> fuck up, Christy. <laughs> Don't let me bring up your, your fucking Final Fantasy fourteen. Dude, my Final shit. Fantasy fourteen character looks sick. Mm, Don't even keep, try. Keep that, Don't even keep try it. That. I have the high no, ground. Keep, keep thinking that. Keep thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so speaking of games with good drip why don't we revisit now that crispy's here and i know y'all have been playing more of it except for brad because brad's been i guess delving <laughs> deep into it, rise of the ronin really. over the past week uh let's talk no, dragon's tried, dogma 2 to no? no i get it by the way just real quick before we before we dive into dt i figured i'd slip this in there the only reason i haven't touched dragon's dogma 2 since last week is because i finished persona 3 reload I am four points closer to being a fish to having my not racist license uh, per Brad's mm. approval. Mm. Um, I finished a fucking Persona game. Wow. Everybody, Almost stop by. Be... It feels no, like, no, know? no. Hang on, hang on. That doesn't. No, it's good. Hang on. If you finish, you're not racist against Japanese people. That That's that true. You could be racist against all others. All race. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're thing. right. That, <laughs> it's they're separate licenses. This is only for Japanese racism. Um, no, I, I thought I thought Persona Three was was pretty great. At end, the the ending I think made the journey totally worth it because it was starting to get a little like, oh my god, this is long this is this is a, you you want to talk about a loop that's long in the tooth? That's a little bit long in the tooth. But hey, Persona Three has got a pretty great ending. Um, so good, in fact, I don't think I even see the necessity. Like, I don't feel like I need to go back to that deal that new it, DLC yeah. they're going to release later. <laughs> this year i feel like i'm pretty happy it was so good i never want to play it again just exactly i mean i'm saying like i feel like people who finish persona games they want to like you know they're all crying by the end these are my best friends and i I never want to leave them and nick's like oh yeah that was nice Uh, let's move uh, on give me my points brand no uh (laughs) i mean i feel like if it was not for this this opportunity to become not racist you would not have finished this game (laughs) okay Okay, you gave me which is you good, did give me which is part of my plan, honestly, to get you to finish more <laughs> Japanese games. So right, but job. uh, you know, I mean, you did definitely give me the push I need. I mean, because let's be honest, that loop, the Persona loop, right, the same loop that every Persona game has, is uh, it's a lot. I mean, you're always going kind of like looping between the same places. I, I the, the number of times they had to be like. Oh, I'm in the classroom now. Oh, I'm in the dorm now. Oh, I'm in the courtyard now. And then, like, the days just go, oh, I'm in my bedroom now. And then haven't answered my phones and deciding who I'm going to talk to, which is, you know, that's, it wears on you after a while. You got like to the, the point dude from American History X. Remember when he got to prison and someone was like, hey, we'll give you points if you stop being racist. And then all of a sudden he was, like, not quite as racist. Is that, is that a that? dated? Is that a dated? Uh, no, I've, that movie's I've like seen... probably twenty five years old. I have seen that. Yeah, movie. but yeah, but then he gets shot at the end by that's true a black oh, yeah. kid. Nick's... So like, what is racism, right? <laughs> yeah, that movie. Oh yeah, well, this is going to dark places. Anyways, <laughs> I think Persona Three. Let's talk about Dragon's Dogma Two, shall we? Uh, sure. Crispy. Mm. You know, you've been playing in your own words. You've been playing a lot of Dragon's Dogma Two in the last. 
like 10 days, a week, 10 days, I've played 38 hours. Only? Nice. Nice. Uh, uh, only? I don't know if you're watching the footage, Christy, but it's the same footage I had from last week. Don't you fucking don't... shame me. Don't you play time shame me, Chris Davis. Don't you do that. You should never let Chris Davis game time shame you on anything. I'm just going to... Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. reverse it. Never let me do that. Uh, just reverse I, it. I, I, let's play Uno reverse game it. that he played... Eight minutes of and talked about for fifteen minutes. <laughs> Forty five minutes nah, and talked about for fifteen minutes. It was twelve minutes, okay? Do not change history here. We have the receipts. Anyways, uh, anyway. Dragon's Dogma Two is pretty cool, right? Um, it is pretty cool. <laughs> it is pretty cool. It is it is so cool that it doesn't want you to know how cool it is for a while. Like it's it's very it's very low key about how cool it is, and then it just kind of like keeps getting cooler and cooler, and you're like, oh shit, why why didn't you tell me? <laughs> like, so I'm still very much uh, in the in the in the zone of it hasn't quite reached to ha- like it hasn't quite shown me how cool it actually is yet. Uh, I don't remember. Is this the game you have you also been actively playing this, Nick? Well, I had told you I I literally put down everything else and focused on Persona Three, and that's that took me well until Sunday. And I haven't had a chance to play anything else nice. since. I played nothing yesterday, so. Nice. Uh, so, I mean, I, it, it's not that, like, it's not like the, that, like, the last 38 hours have, like, convinced me this is a good game. I I loved the first Dragon's Dogma. I was, like, mm-hmm. all in mm-hmm. on this game's bullshit from the get-go. Um, man. This is a cool game. <laughs> like, this is a really cool game. Oh, I thought this was about uh, to go I, a different the, direction. I the, thought the you were about to surprise thing us. About it, the biggest thing about this game, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I did not listen to what you guys talked about, so I don't know if I'm just going to be running over a lot of the same talking points that you guys you covered be, last week. No, no, that, that's, um, that's perfect, actually. The, Let me tell you, how does biggest, it feel to play an open world game with shadows? Because, <laughs> you know, Rise of the Wait, <laughs> Doesn't have shadows? Uh, no, well, the, you know. not only does this game have shadows, but they're scary and oppressive. Um, yeah. like like the darkness is truly terrifying. I feel like the problem, not not the problem, but like the thing that this game does better than the first game. Um, the I mean, just the map being bigger and having more like kind of biome variety is so cool because that was always the thing that like you know after thirty, forty, fifty hours of the first Dragon's Dogma, I felt like I kind of seen the whole map Mm -hmm. and then i was just kind of running over locations that i'd already been and that and the map size for the first one was such that like getting anywhere was like kind of a hassle but it wasn't like i don't know it wasn't like enough of a enough of a consideration to make it like part i don't know to make it like a satisfying part of the gameplay loop like it wasn't necessarily a game about traveling as much as you would have this to prepare like for is. travel because this is a game about traveling. Work. Like this oh, is yeah. a so, game about so traveling. Be, since, on that note, since you weren't here last week, and this is the same footage, yeah. I recorded all of this footage, right? And everything from the I'm at, when I recorded this, I was about ten hours into the game, which is kind yeah. of where I still am. Um, I yeah. hadn't even made. Oh, it look at that! Yet. Look at that tiny little yeah. speck of map you've uncovered. Hadn't even made it to the capital yet. I spent I, I spent about Dude. an hour and a half to two hours in the character creator, and everything else has just been running around the world. <sighs> kind of going on this journey organically and like that has been great this game is so wild man like like so much of the dna of like like one minute i feel like i'm kind of playing a souls game the next minute i feel like i'm playing a monster hunter game like uh, and, and then and then there's like yeah like i said the travel like honestly I don't remember whose review I was reading about it. I feel like it was Paul Tassi because he was kind of like down on the game, but then like came back and was like, no, no, this is actually really cool. Um, But like someone was saying, like, if you're playing this game or maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it was Fextra Life's like 100 hour impression video. Someone was saying that if you are playing this game and you're feeling down on it, consider if it's because you're just playing like the main scenario and if that's the case stop doing that like you should instead Mm. play this game in a way where you're just like gathering your supplies and then just like finding an area of the map that you haven't uncovered yet and just like walking out there and seeing what's up like yeah that is so fun like the idea of like how stressful it is for me to be like okay i'm in bak and i have to get back to harv village like 
okay, I got to prepare. And then it's like, like, oh no, like the, the day that I was like, that I was like, I'm going to go find the elves. Like I'm going to go find the, the secret elf arbor or whatever it is. And I didn't really know where it was. I just know where I had, where I had been, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go explore this, this region of the map today. And then like literally spending like four or five in-game days on the road to the point where like, by the time I got, to the fucking elf town i was like oh thank god if i had to stay out on the road another day i would be dead like it I, I had a similar <sighs> experience I, I, oh. I was sharing last week it's with so getting Brad, the since you have for the first time like since like you haven't played much since then are you still in the same because you left us last night last time on a cliffhanger where you said you went you made it to that uh that inn in the middle of nowhere and they were going to charge you like a thousand like ten thousand no. dollars well, so the, the story i told last week was my trek to back Batala, which let me tell you was a Dude. little dicey and by the time i finally got there i was like poisoned and in, in my mage was just curing me and curing me Dude. and curing me because i was like this poison's gonna wear off eventually and i finally make it to back Batal and i get to the end and, and they want nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine <laughs> gold and i'm like what the fuck that's so yeah. good no but that that was also before i knew that camping equipment oh <laughs> with, uh, yeah i didn't know i thought it was a yeah resource that but they didn't have one like, with me I, it broke i had yeah. one and it broke or something and and I didn't have it. Yeah, like anything. if you get ambushed in the middle of the night, it breaks your camp, and you have to get. A I didn't know how, that's how it worked because yeah. it happened to me enough times where I got interrupted that I just assumed or early well, on. That's that certainly it was, have you guys? I mean, have you guys been? Resources. I mean, I'm sure everyone's had this situation happen at least once, where like you're taking an ox cart somewhere, you get ambushed halfway through, yeah. and then like during the fight, it's like the middle of the night, uh, yeah. and during the fight, the, the ox cart. cart gets destroyed, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh fuck, I'm just like now yeah. out here in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, uh, mm-hmm. like it's so good. I feel like every it's time I found a sense. new town, I am like crawling into town, like, uh, <laughs> I need help. And that's the way it should be. And it's so good. And it's so good. And it is the way it should be. It's, it it's is. big Morrowind vibes, it is. you know? I, like, this the is, Oxhurts are just the still riders. You like, know? this game does exploration better than most exploration games, I feel like. Yeah. Like, like, the, like, yeah. like, somehow, somehow, they've made every, I don't know. They've made my map like a meaningful resource and they've made me like really consider anytime I'm going to like go somewhere. Like I keep hearing about all this amazing stuff in the game that I haven't found yet. And I'm not, you know, I'm not looking up where it is or anything, but I'm like, I need to go find that thing. So I'm like, you know, setting expeditions for myself to like go out and try to find this or that. And that has been do you know, a really rewarding. Do you know where you picked up your first uh, secret token? I do. Oh. Uh, it, I think it was in Vernworth, maybe. I don't know. I've let's I, hope so. Why? Apparently, he said that was just a PSA that everybody's been saying for the past week. I hope you remember where you picked up your first seeker token. There's a quest related to. I no guess. idea. No uh, idea what what that means, and I had no idea where I picked uh, mine up. <laughs> but yeah, so I know yeah. it's somewhere between <laughs> it's somewhere it between the starting area and and the capital. I can tell you that. <laughs> I now um, know what it's related I took to, an, I'm not going to say it. What, what was great is, like, I took an ox cart to the capital the first time I went there. So, like, the way, like the ox cart is so great because, like, if you rest during the trip, it doesn't fill in any of the map for the time that you're unconscious. Oh, is that true? Oh, yes. that is true. Yeah, it's so good. So, like, I'm, like, in the, I'm, like, in the city and I'm, like, okay, I know what's going on in the immediate area around the city, but, like, I don't know what lies between here and like mm-hmm. another place I've already been. Like, I don't, I don't know how dangerous that road is. Like, uh, God, it's just, Hmm. Hmm. Good. Mm, it's it's so good. good. And what I, world and world. the, the, like, this is before like you get into the vocation system and, and everything like that, because this entire time until like a couple hours ago, until like maybe two hours ago, I had only played mage and sorcerer. Like, mm-hmm. which is very different. And what are you now? You would play anything else. Um, I just in, went the warfare. Yeah, I went with. Uh, so after sorcerer, so I maxed out sorcerer, got all the augments for it, um, and then I I did a couple levels of of warrior, and then I did a couple levels of archer, and I just I don't remember why, but I just unlocked trickster. 
so I've been doing mm. Trickster. And Trickster's mm. interesting because, like, I feel like I'm doing absolutely nothing. Like, yeah, I don't even think the thing... Are. I, I don't even think the thing that I am doing is doing that much. And, and <laughs> like, I'm trying... Like, like, I it just... It doesn't do damage, literally. Yeah. Yeah, but, or like, so I don't do? know, like... Like, there's a... But, like, there's a, uh... Like, augments, like, you can, you can, like, buff all of your, uh... You can buff all of your allies' attacks, which I don't know that that's actually helping... Um, their main like the, crowd control so. for the first level. The only like weapon skill you have is like an aggro, is like a hey look at me kind of aggro, and like I can't find a situation in which that's useful because I'm the squishiest member of the party. Like, <laughs> I like I got the one where you can like put up two invisible walls now, and like that's fun, but I don't know what it's doing for me really. Does the AI um, like not? go across the wall because they think it's a wall um i don't know like battles are so chaotic like it's hard to tell what's actually going on um i've i've used it more as like i'm gonna back up drop a wall and then like go behind with my mage and let them cast their their healing magic but like pop shot in chat says it feels more like an in-game class because by the time you get there, they're ma- you're getting like level fifty pawns and shit. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um. I mean, I, I mean, I'm probably going to switch the, off. When they revealed the class, they showed like a you know make a fake like you're like on the edge of a cliff and you can like make a fake like extension to the cliff that the AI thinks is the ground, what? and they'll like what? run and jump onto that fake ground and, and just fall to their death off the cliff. See, because that's what I'm saying. Like I feel like, floor. yeah, I, I feel like there's, it's, it's going to be worth leveling up because there's going to be crazy stuff like that. Um, like even right now, I've got the one where, like, it's there's one where you like go unconscious and your soul leaves your body and you can like scout areas ahead, um, as like astral, like, project. astral projecting, yeah, yeah, um, which that. is really cool. I haven't found a great situation where I'm like, no. it, it like, no. like this is something I need right now, but like it's it's really cool. Um, which this is everything with big, Trickster is like this I class has found... big dragons dogma one energy where yeah. it's like ah oh, these are some great ideas. I, I can't wait for the sequel where they finally like flush us out. Yeah, where they like useful. finally get this right. Yeah, um, I I I I leveled it up enough to get the augment. Like they're they're one of the tricksters augments is the one where it'll tell you when wake stone shards and seeker tokens are nearby because you can like hear mm-hmm. them now oh. and they and they blink, um, oh. so you can like see them. So. Mm-hmm. It, you only have to get like two or three levels into trickster to get that so i've already got that so i think i might put trickster on the back burner for a minute and switch to a different class. some people had this idea of like the warfare where you could like do ch- the trickster stuff and like set up your little aggro pulling thing and then switch off but apparently it like mm-hmm. goes away super quick when you switch so oh. even in that situation it's not useful yeah. um uh, it's a neat idea but the execution is it's just you know the number of dicey. times uh, this is pretty basic cuz I'm I st- again I'm still pretty early but just like just to kind of speak to like how fun and and unpredictable combat can be like just playing as like a warrior it's it's a warrior I think that's that's the starting like knight uh, you know like sword fighter. shield fighter. class fighter okay fighter yeah like the number of times I've like been in in combat with just like you know thieves and whatnot on the road or whatever and I've just like resorted to like tackling them, picking them up, throwing them over my yeah. shoulder, and just like tossing them off of a cliff. If you're like it's standing at, so near good. any like body of water, you just like throw them in, and they like melt. Like oh, it's yeah. fucking brutal. I saw I saw <laughs> I saw a clip on Twitter of someone who like picks up their pawn, throws them off a cliff, dude, throws them off a cliff to their death, mystic then pulls archer. out their 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 mystic archer or the magic archer and uses the revive arrow. To like revive them, and then they jump off the cliff, and their pawn catches them, that, and they're able to traverse what? way down a cliff that way. That is like, now. What? That is what? now. That trick is now on every single things you didn't know, tips and tricks, things I wish I oh, knew, yeah. like starter tips. Everyone steals each other shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, video that's out there now. I haven't found. I haven't found the unlock for Mystic Archer. I haven't fo- or Magic Archer. I haven't found the unlock for mystic spearhand is that what it's called oh mystic spearhand i think you should be able to get early i i definitely got mm. it early i is um, one of them i know it's like you have to find an item and then ha- have you been back to uh melf 
after I haven't. I haven't been back to Melvin in so long. It's I, I keep I keep like trying because to the like guy go. that gives it to you, I think, is there. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, because oh, I, I, I you... just assumed that that's what you'd be repping. It's you know, it's like a hooded Jedi sick. with a twirly double staff. You know, wait, it's... are you talking about warfare or Mystic? no, 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 Mystic Spearhand? I thought that's what you'd be repping, but I guess you just don't have it yet. I don't have it. Um, I was going really hard on Sorcerer because Sorcerer is sick. Like Sorcerer is so fun. I I love just like like I'm so addicted now just to floating. Like I hate not being able to do yeah, it on yeah. any other class. Like there's so many things like this game is super vertical. There's so many things that it's like you probably shouldn't be able to get up there, but if you're a sorcerer, you can just kind of float up there so, and then so like... I've, I've had a couple scenarios where I have a, a sorcerer pawn that's with me, it's not mine. Yeah. Um but yeah, they have that float ability. Um, and yeah, so oftentimes I can have them either float ac- across a gap or there's like a treasure chest that's like on a, like a small little, like, you know, uh, yeah. not a little mountain, but a little like a higher up position I can't get to. And, you know, I'll point at it and they'll go and, you know, float up and get it. <sighs> yeah. But the, the pointing mechanics in this game are kind of weird. I mean, I don't really understand how they work because you can't like target something. Yeah. Um, it's like you just kind of point in a direction yeah. and you're like, go. You're just kind of like, so do there's it. it yeah yeah and so one of my pawns like floats over and they just stand next to the chest no i'm like dude open it what the fuck are you doing and so i keep pointing i keep pointing i keep pointing and so then my other pawn like my actual pawn not the one i've hired is he said something i can't remember what he said and then he just walks off a cliff (laughs) (laughs) yeah to his death and i'm like what the fuck are you doing yeah yeah, it gets a little Um, buggy from time to time but but the other one that that I've seen that there's a mod for on PC that I would never download because whoever downloads this mod is a monster. Uh, but there's a mod that takes away the post battle high fives with your pawns. Why yeah, would you I'm like, do why would that? You? Every time yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah, like why? I love the 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 fucking uh, Tiger Woods meme where it's like my pawn after every battle, like big dog. <laughs> <laughs> why why would I not want a high five? Come Lord, after every battle, oh, come on. It's so good, it's so good. Yeah, all the stuff with the pawns in this game is so good. Like I feel like the. The like the idea from the first game where they're like, oh, your pawns will have knowledge of quests that you haven't done yet or knowledge of secrets like that came up in the first game and it was cool. But it feels more tangible. But here. it wasn't as varied as it is here. And it wasn't as like, yeah, like like literally there have been like multiple <laughs> like, hey, there's a cave over here. Let's go check it out. I almost didn't. And then I go in, in there the first and find game? like cool loot and shit like it's so sick. It's so sick. Yeah. Like in that first game, I was like, I, I, I see what I can, I, I know what you're telling me. This is, is happening behind the scenes here, but I don't know if I really believe it. Yeah. This game, I believe it. I feel like the because it's just the number, like the dynamic, how dynamic it feels, and how many times they have actually pointed things out and like tried to lead me to places or say like I'm gonna take this information back to the, my master or whatever. I'm like, okay, it definitely feels like a much more tangible system mm-hmm. in this game. And that's yeah, cool. and I think that I think part of that is just is just the broadening of the world design too. There's just more stuff for that to be like relevant, you know. Um, it's it's so much fun. I don't know, like this this is a weird, imperfect, like brilliant, insane game sometimes, and I'm so so fucking thankful that it exists. <laughs> yeah, like it's no. so sick and like honestly like i'm sitting here loving it and uh, it's also making me excited for the next uh for the next monster hunter for what is that called wild monster wild 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 yep. yeah like there's yeah i don't know man like I, I i was playing warriors swinging around that great sword being like ah, ah if only i had my fucking I know, right? Dark Akuga right? great sword. <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the, you know, the, the combat in Dragon's Dog was nice, but like, let's be real here. If it was just Monster Hunter combat, Dude, if it was, was Monster like, Hunter, oh combat, God. this would be perfect. Well, like that that lame ass tackle that they give the warrior is so like, yeah. You know, one of my complaints last week, and I was mostly like echoing pretty much everything you're saying. We all, I think, we all were, but um, I feel like it's a little. Like, it, it seems so limited. Like, I feel like they could have done so much more with the vocation system and even the combat system in terms of, like, something. Like, 
like some a little more depth, a little more synergy. Like like I, it would be it would be great if you could just swap to your pawn in battle, which by the way, you can in Rise of the Ronin. Um s- switch to your pawn in battle just so I can like play two different classes on any given like fucking journey. Because it's such a to do to switch your classes. And like there's so like that stuff is so good. It's so fun. But yeah. you know, they really don't give you the opportunities to like fuck with too much of it, like at least not easily. And I just want to get the warfare. And I saw like Mike saying it in chat earlier, just so I can use stuff like just levitate switch, yeah. without actually like being like a full blown sorcerer. I could just swap to the staff and like do my levitate and swap back. Like I want, I want a little more versatility with my class and my move set. And I feel like, I feel like the, you know, I feel like they could have gone a little harder on that. I feel like the warfare should have like maybe been like the default class. You should have always been able to like switch weapons and not have it like waste one of your skill slots. You know, like it's crazy yeah. to me that you can switch. And, and we <coughs> talked about it last week when you're warfare, you have to waste the skill slot face button to even swap weapons but like yeah. the actual skills on your other three buttons they don't even change so like if you're like a sorcerer slash uh, uh like warrior you can have like one like two spells and like maybe one warrior skill and that's it and i feel like that is such a wasted opportunity because the skills are so cool and the spells are so cool and like the movement and like the weapons so, so i feel like there could be so much more depth there and like the stuff that they had in dragon's dogma online there was more new crazy classes and skills in that, than there that. Are in this versus uh the original game and i'm like why were they why were they so stingy with that stuff i don't really get it maybe they're doing planning to do a big expansion but even the Dark Arisen for the first game really didn't introduce didn't much new. They they introduced like another class level for the vocations with some mm-hmm. new skills there, but like it wasn't much. Yeah. And, and I just I don't know. Real I don't quick, know. I, w- I want more. I want more. I want the next Dragon's Dogma now in another twelve years so they can iterate <laughs> on it again. But before we move on, I want to you know, throw it over to Nolan for a second. I know you you've been playing a lot of it too. Mm-hmm. Uh, how how is how is it going for you, sir? I mean, uh, I, I would echo uh, the statements that we've already been talking about. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not feeling well at the moment. So I'm not super talkative. Mm. Um, but uh, no, yeah, I, I agree with a lot of the things that the uh, both Crispy and Brad have been saying. I've been really enjoying the exploration. Um, while I echo that a, there's been a lot of pawn improvements with the AI, there there are definitely still limitations. Um, I can't remember who said it in chat earlier. Um, uh, do, 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 do. I'm trying to find it real quick, uh, but it, it's that whole thing. No, it's that it's that thing where when you're you know just running down the road and like a random pond, just like hey, where is it? And they start talking yeah. to you. It's like dude, fuck off, man. Like I'm yeah. not gonna hire you. Get yep, out of here. It drives me crazy. <laughs> um, and yeah, that is annoying. And yes, it does end up meaning I end up having like wide berths when I'm going down. If I see another thing, I'm just like nope, just gonna like. I feel like awkward. I'm like gotta go into the other side of the street. And I'm like fuck off, man. I don't, I do I don't like have any change. Like people, yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes I never quite know. Like, is this a pawn? I'm like, okay, well that. Yeah, I'm, I'm never sure pawn. if it's like because you <laughs> get the too whole close, thing is you'll like, find out. It's the whole thing of like in theory, every single NPC can be talked to. And sometimes they might have a quest for you. And so it's like, I don't want to like avoid them because I'm like, is this a pawn or is this a random guy on the road who might give me a quest? Um, yeah. And so far I've just been avoiding them. Uh, you know, Mr. Papa, but yeah. yeah Mr. Papa no, I was just gonna, says, says, I feel like this game is barely holding together as it is. And like that, that is not only true, but like, there's a little bit of charm to that because yeah. on my first trip to like through the, the checkpoint and I started to head mm-hmm. to back Batal, there's like a mm-hmm. story moment where like, you know, an important character in like a fancy ox cart or whatever is passing yeah. through. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, okay, well I guess he's just on his journey. And I'm like, well, I'm going to keep heading in that direction too. And I'm like running down and, and you know, I'm fighting some goblins. All of a sudden a griffin comes down. I'm like, oh shit, I guess I'm fighting a fucking griffin now because that's what Dragon's Dogma does. But then I'm like, wait, but that important like story character is like still coming and I'm fighting this griffin. And I'm like, is this, is the game going to be okay here? Because this griffin, <laughs> I feel like it could completely obliterate this dude's like carriage i don't know what could happen Dude. and i'm like desperately trying to fight this so, griffin without, it, a without getting times. close to this story 
NPCs. There's a number of times where like story NPCs after I finish the quest randomly just start attacking me. And and mm-hmm. like and then all of my pawns jump on them and murder them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whoa, 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 everyone calm down. And oh, it's yeah. like 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 I love that the solution that, that that like the game solution to that kind of weird unintended interaction is just like well, there's a morgue, and their body will be there. You can go yeah, resurrect yeah. them if you need them. I guess, like it, uh... that's that's a thing. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The different cities have their own charnel houses, and if you go there, they have all these slabs, and like any NPC that dies will be on those slabs, and you can take a uh, wake stone and revive wake them. Stone, yeah. So if it's there's a an quest NPC rare item, yeah, there's an extremely rare wake stone. Maybe only one in the entire playthrough. That uh can revive an entire city. Yeah. What? Let me tell you, there's because because there Nick, might be a reason. There's a reason for it, you Nick. might want that. Well, no, I mean like, oh, are we not? Are we just saying? That, come on, let's like not get into it. Hold on, let's not get into it. That. There's tool tips yeah. for it. Come on. So, oh. so the the other what I want to say is, uh, I what? one of the things. So speaking of reviving NPCs that get killed. Uh, potentially important quest lines, NPCs murdering, getting murdered. This game really forces me to play in a play style I'm not used to, in that there's not really a save and load feature. You know, you yeah. can't just like pop a quick save and then fuck yeah. around and then load that quick save. That's not really yeah. a thing. Yeah, can you save your game? Yeah, sure, but that's not really how it works. Like doing anything in the world will do an auto save if enough stuff happens or certain things happen. Uh, in my general play style, just because I'm a fucking insane person, um, is I constantly save in case I make a mistake that I want to take back. But I can't really do that in this. Mm. And it's it really is not too to be though. sad. There, there's a thing to save. There, there's no, your I know, last in sleep. But like I've definitely gotten to the moment where I'm in the middle of the city. I'm like, oh, this dude's dog slip. I'm gonna pick him up and throw him. And then all of a sudden, like, oh. I'm fighting all these people. Oh, I think I'm going to have to kill this guy. Uh, Wait, who was that? Was that guy important? And I'm hmm. like, uh, do I reload here? Uh, I'm sure everything will be all right. No, yeah. and, and to you your point, yes, there, is the, as much, but there yeah. is the last end save, but oftentimes that last end save was like five hours ago. And mm-hmm. while I don't mind reloading 15 minutes or 20 minutes of gameplay, I really do not want to backtrack on five hours of gameplay. Five hours is a lot, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and so, so yeah, states, man. it does, states. it does. And that's one of the things I like about it is because it pushes me out of my comfort zone. But that being said as well, it really makes me... I don't want to say spend less time uh, like worried or concerned because I'm like, you know what, whatever happens is going to happen and I'll just move on and I'll just keep going. Um, And so I really like that. It's kind of changing how I at least play this game. Obviously if I play any other game that has an instant save, I'm still going to do it. Uh, But I like that this game is kind of, you know, it forces your hand to it a little bit. Mike says low turn. Everybody says low turn. Let me tell you, how about we just have the dragon's on with team make a Lord of the Rings uh, again. This is just going right back to Larian situation. Let's make let, just let Larian make Get a Star more. Wars game. God damn it! <laughs> I just okay. I mean, like we're gonna talk about pawns, but we're not gonna talk about the plague. It brings it brings it up. It oh. tells you about it. There's there's a force like menu thing where it tells you. That's about what it. I was saying. It's like we should I talk mean, about that. I, I've heard people talk about. It. I, I'm not far enough about to really like. Yeah, I don't know, think any of us are far enough to have it really affecting our games. It's yet, not so affected we'll me yet. I'm just it. aware. Yeah. yeah, I hear it's well, more that's, of like a late game. That's game. a big. That's a big reason why you would want to be able to revive an uh, entire town because the dragon plague can drive a pawn crazy, and then if it progresses far enough, you'll rest, and while you're asleep, your pawn will go murder everybody in the town. <laughs> Jesus. Mm-hmm. Well, that's <laughs> And sounds, you wake uh... up and everyone's dead. <laughs> but I also heard if you wait a couple days, they all come back. So I don't know. No, wait, really? So I, I think so. I certain, didn't know about that. Uh, one. Shopkeepers and hmm. maybe story related NPCs will come back, but not everyone. Yeah, you got to like watch your pawns. Like if they start yeah. getting out of For line. Signs. You wait, are you funny. telling me Come Lord funny. can't be trusted? Well, None of it, them can it, be trusted. I mean, the PSA is like if they start like giving you lip or if they're not like obeying your commands in battle, ye- yeah, yeet them or, into the brine. Yeah, or like if you <laughs> see them, them have into the brine. Uh, apparently, also if they have headgear equipped, 
if they get if they progress far enough they will automatically unequip their headgear so that you can uh, see that their eyes are glowing. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Little wild. details, man. Lots of really cool little details in this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's sure. wild. All right. Uh, well, let, I'm sure, as always, we'll revi- we mean, will revisit. We will revisit. We're going to be playing Dragon's Dogma sure. for a while, yeah. so we'll revisit on a future episode. So good. Uh, and things, things will continue to progress. Um, in the meantime, guys, we're going to take a short break when we come back. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that sweet Stellar Blade demo. Uh, I know Chris Davis has been playing a little Unicorn Overlord. And then, of course, we'll wrap up with the four-player minute. So if you're watching us live on Twitch or YouTube, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Um, before we get started, I just want to let you know, if you're listening, no one did have to bow out at the end of the show, so we'll see him on a future episode, or perhaps next week for game night. We'll see if you are... We're, we're still trying to t- figure out kind of what's going on with next week's show. It might end up being a trailer talk night, or a game night, or I'm not sure, but we'll keep everybody apprised of that situation. Make sure you're in our Discord at discord.gg slash player. That's the best place to keep track of everything going on with us. Um, but anyways, little mid-show housekeeping, with, but I now want to talk about, and I'm going to be honest, I had no idea that I'm the only person here who played this. You fools. I played the demo. All right, <laughs> I played the demo for Let's Stellar Blade. Um, roll that sweet footage. A lot of, so just uh-huh. FYI, a lot of this footage is, I, I pretty much started the footage, I started the demo over, so like. It's for basically the first like 15 minutes of this demo, so it's a lot of it is very cut cutscene heavy. Um, if you're not sure what Stellar Blade is, uh, you've probably seen it's the booty game. Oh, it's I feel weird even calling it the booty game. It's like uh, you know, sexy lady game, right? It's, it's much you know, more just than booty. It's definitely much more than that. Um, but it's also kind like of other jiggly bits. Uh, but I, yeah, other jiggly bits. I you know. And I'll be honest, having played this now, if you want, I'll dig into the gameplay here in a second. I do think there's definitely more to it than just being kind of this sexy lady, maybe borderline gratuitous sexy lady action game. Um, but Brad, you said you said this in Discord, and I think it holds true. I think there is definitely a very obvious reason this game is suddenly on the tips of everybody's lips. You know what I mean? Like everybody's everybody's talking about this game for a very obvious reason. And, uh, and I think a lot of that, a lot of those conversations have kind of been, well, this is also surprisingly, uh, deep and fun. And maybe it's more competent than people are giving, giving it credit for. I really didn't need to hear that out of your mouth, Nick. I really needed that. I I need to hear you say that this game is terrible, that it's not going to sell well and it's going to get terrible reviews. Well, first of all, Fuck. First of all, let me just preface this by saying this is very, even after playing the demo, this is very much for me. Like, I will play this game if it reviews higher than like a 70. Yeah. That's kind of my, that's kind of like my threshold. There's like, there's some games where it's like, I don't care. There's some games where I'm like, I don't really care what critics think. Even if the score's poorly, I know it's my shit. I'm going to play it, right? That's kind of how I felt about Alone in the Dark. I knew I was gonna, I'm gonna play Alone in the Dark, even if it scored what it did, which was like six, mid sixties, whatever. But like, this is a game I'm kind of waiting for it to like really prove itself because a demo, it's kind of hard to really get that across in a demo, I suppose. Um, and I'm I'm skeptical, and I think a lot of my skepticism does kind of stem from maybe some of their art design choices. I don't know. And some of the things they've said. Maybe some of the things they've said. And some of the weird things they've said about, like, they spent a lot of time modeling her ass because that's what you're going to be staring at for the entire game. Like, things like that just kind of set off some alarm bells. You know what I mean? Um, But, uh, and this is weird. Like, I usually associate this kind of action game with, like, something that comes out at the beginning of of a console's life cycle. It reminds me very much of, like, a heavenly sword or uh you know just it, it, and i think i say that because of like a lot of the like like 
it's like this weird science fiction universe, this original science fiction universe that's just kind of over the top. And there's a lot of uh, time and efforts and money obviously spent on, on using the tech in interesting ways. So like creating just giant set pieces and stuff. And like, it kind of leads me to kind of be skeptical of how deep is this game? Like how act legitimately fun is this game? Um, and I do think the demo does a little bit to uh, assuage those concerns, um, because you know, I mean, but it it is pretty it is pretty like uh, standard fare for this genre, right? I mean, it's got what you, it's got kind of what you come to expect. Uh, it, you know, you know, you attack with square, you have to do heavy attacks with triangle. You're heading, you're trying, you're, you're timing your your blocks for or your parries to like get like it kind of has like the the bayonetta. Um, what do they call it? Where you do like the the dodge and it like suddenly like everything witch slows. Time. Well, yeah, it kind of it kind of has a little bit of that witch time thing, which you know if you if you do a perfect parry uh, with a block or you do a perfect dodge, it kind of slows down time for a second, creates this cool like effect and stuff. And, like that stuff really feels really good here. It's really satisfying, mm-hmm. but it's like and you've got of... enemy designs straight out of Scorn. Looks like enemy like... designs are bad. Yeah, yeah, they're not great. It's it, it's another one of those. It's another one of those things that kind of lead leaves me to like. I mean, I kind of feel like that that way about everything in this game. It's like everything is over designed. That's kind of the thing that I keep coming back to. It like every single thing is super over designed. Like all these these character. Uh, co- the, this is I'll be honest. This game's gonna have. This game might have the drip. I don't know. It's they they have it. There's certainly and you go into the menu. It has, like, costumes. I mean, you can't really pick anything in the demo, right? But it, there's a space for it. So, like, you're going to be swapping out a lot of outfits and costumes for these characters. And all the enemies are, like, s- kind of super detailed, but also super generic looking at the same time. Like, just weird, scorn-looking aliens or whatever. Um, and, and it's also one of these games where it's, like, like, they throw you kind of into the deep end in this, like, new universe. And they just start throwing around terms that, like sound really weird because you've never heard them before like uh like they're trying to like world build by just using foreign sounding words like that you've never heard before like alpha nativa or some you know things <laughs> like that and you're just it's like i i can't quite put Isn't my this finger the on next like, near game you know it's i mean i will say this the uh, kind of the uh like the tone they're going for maybe a little bit is maybe a little bit of near and like I, you know mean? just in terms tone, of like the tone of of near is like, like when you find depression <laughs> yeah right okay maybe not <laughs> i mean some depressing shit happens in this in in this demo and you eventually get to kind of this like after you get through all this like crazy set piece shit that you're seeing happening on the screen here you're in kind of like this destroyed ancient city and the music's kind of somber and it's kind of it's raining and you're running around as, as you know sexy lady and like fighting you know you know weird looking alien things i mean it's it's obviously not to the same level as near but it's i i would be shocked if near wasn't some kind of subtle inspiration <laughs> for this game um well subtle. more than subtle yeah maybe not so yeah nothing subtle about this game i don't know why i use the word subtle it's, it's kind of the opposite of that um yeah, yeah, so the game is better than it had any right to be, which is, I guess, the surprising part, right? Because but can it sustain that for some, a full game? Is, I don't is, know. We, have we, we haven't talked about this developer, but this is a Korean developer of like, like kind of a games, porny, right? porny mobile gotcha game, right? That's Shift Up. Right. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen the ads, but you, but it's like a, I don't know what the gameplay is actually like, but you see like the jiggly ladies are like behind cover, and then they'll pop out and they'll like shoot like at things in your the mobile game or whatever and their asses will like jiggle as they're <laughs> as they're shooting and it's like Dude, it's, it's like taking up like a third of the screen it's yeah goddess of nike goddess physics, of victory baby. you know i mean it, like here's the, th- and here's like, the and thing so, but but like but well i want to say this because i've noticed this like last year liza p was a game that i thought kind of looked nice but i didn't take it very seriously because of the it was another korean developer that had a background in making like an mmo that was like not well received at all it was like a very poorly received like mmo right. type game that like it's like okay well i don't know what this liza p is but they definitely don't make big budget action games that are actually good and polished and then it came out and it was like 
this is good. I, I don't know. I, I've never, I don't know this developer and yeah. I guess they're on the map now. And, and I feel like Genshin Impact changed things, right? Which, mm, which yeah. wasn't Korean, but it was a Chinese developed game. And I feel like a lot of what you saw out of like China and Korea were like MMOs or like mobile online gotcha things. And like, but Genshin Impact comes along and they're like, you know, we can just kind of make our own Breath of the Wild. And it's like a really nice looking polished, like, like, you know, action game where you explore the world and stuff and people took notice and and they spent a lot of time and money making that and it paid off right that so thing was huge saying. and now you're seeing stuff like wukong right which is coming out and it's like another chinese developer you've never heard of before with like no real history and it's like i don't know this looks nice but you know I think especially with Korean games, they've had a history of of games that show really well in trailers, especially like MMOs with like action combat. And then people play them and they're like, well, this runs like shit and it feels like garbage. It looked nice in a trailer, you know, like like Crimson Desert. Like some people are it's mm-hmm. from the Black Desert online people or whatever. Right. And that's like the textbook, like Korean MMO that shows really well in trailers. But then you play it and it's like, well, I can wear a skimpy outfit and that's nice. But like this thing look, plays like shit. And. And, I, and, you know, I sort of had those concerns for something like this, right? Because, you know, this isn't the kind of game that, that they're known for, like, putting out and just, like, killing it. But this could be a Liza P situation. It could it just could be, be, like, be. Like, 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 things have changed and these studios are taking these games a little more seriously, you know? And they're not just, like, mobile trash, which is literally what the developer used to make. Right. Um, so and, Liza P or fucking Black Myth Wukong is going to be good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Right? I, mean, I'm, I mean, that's the I'm thing. I'm certainly like, like, thinking it, so, yeah. It, also, I, I'm I, hesitant I enough that, to where, like, I'm not going to bid on it in, like, Fantasy Critic necessarily. But, like, well, I'm can't. definitely, they definitely have my attention. Like, Wukong is definitely when I'm going to be, like, looking at reviews saying, like, is this the real deal? You can't because bid it on it in cool. Fantasy Critic because I already have it. Um, no, I, I'm saying, and like, I, 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 Black I never Myth, planned to Wukong. draft it or whatever. Um, I will say this, though, about, like, Black Desert Online. I've I've read into that game a few times, and the only complaints I ever... Like, most of the complaints I hear about that game are not in, like, the actual action of the game, but in just, like, how grindy it is. So, mm, I don't know, is, like, the, you, these studios yeah. may have their gameplay shit together, you know? Like, their actual, like, minute-to-minute action responsiveness... Yeah. I mean, I, I will say Might this: I was good. pleasantly, I was pleasantly surprised by Liza P by the demo for this game. Like, I think it, I don't think it's like the, I don't think it's like the tightest action game I've ever played. But it, like, it feels nice. It feels responsive. Like when you get, when you time your parries, time your dodges, and you start to really get into the combat, it, 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 it feels pretty good. I don't think it's gonna, you know, obviously just based on the demo. Like, there's, a, there's, you, you go in, like, you go into the menu, and there's a pretty surprisingly big skill tree that you can kind of glimpse in the demo and so like it leads me to believe if like they're that by the time you finish this game you're it's the combat's going to feel dramatically more complex and it's more interesting but it's kind of hard to gauge that from a demo like we're only talking about this game because of (sighs) yeah like people are saying, well, it's better than I thought it would be. It's competent. That's good enough. And like, you know, I feel like Rise of the Ronin because it's like some ugly game, right? Or it's, it's, you know, but of course, like, you know, Team Ninja knows their fucking combat, but no one gives a shit. They want to play the mid one where with the pretty jiggly lady. And it's like sucking all the air out of the room. Can we room talk about the, like, the pretty jiggly lady? Like, I'm, I have no, I have no problem playing the sexy fine, lady. I love playing good. the sexy ladies. It's fine. But like, there is something oh, a little. There's something a little, um, I mean, there's something a little off-putting. If the game when it, when it looked feels like, like oh, and it didn't have this jiggly lady, no one would be talking about this game, right? Like, you're just it almost jealous feel- that she looks cuter than your lady. Okay, okay, my <laughs> lady's got plenty cute drips, plenty of jiggle. Okay. Well, no, she don't really the, jiggle much, which is crazy, right? Because fucking literally right? Team Ninja she, put jiggle hard? on the map with the original Dead or Alive, damn it. They're in, they invented jiggle. Where's the look, jiggle? Look, look, look. Some Where's of... Some the of there's something to be said about, like, when... Like, Sweet baby got to Team Ninja. Look, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> there's something to be said when, like, like the sexy lady at the at the front of your game is kind of being used 
one to like prop up the rest of the game because I feel like again, like you said, this is the this is the kind of like the elephant in the room. This is why everyone's kind of talking about this game is because it's so kind of like in your face and gratuitous in a lot of ways. And two, um, uh, like, oh my god, I just had a thought. She wears high heels that. without the heels. It's literally just like a ballet it's slipper just, it's, where she's forced to like stand on her toes. You know, I before I played this demo, I had to go. Kind of, I was like, I went into. Robin was in the other room watching something. I was like, "Hey, just so you know, before you, just in case you walk into my room in the next few minutes, I'm playing a game. Okay, I'm playing a game. <laughs> it's a little interesting. Just, but you're like, like, well, I'm now doing I have it to for come the good of Gamergate. Out. I have to <laughs> do my part. <laughs> uh, fuck you. This is for the West. <laughs> this is this is to make all games better. Hey, hey so look, I'm not saying they're, they're they can't. combat heels. I I'm not saying they can't do cool shit with this character because i'll say this i think it's surpri- like the voice acting was surprisingly why does her hair look so solid. stupid it's it's like it's like a it's it like looks hair. like it looks like her hair from heavenly sword do you remember how her hair behaved in heavenly sword is very similar but that was like yeah, ps3 tech 2007 this looks i know like that tech. It's, it's weird oh, but like also actually. just for a second just for a second obviously everyone's calling this the ass game right you know there are moments. There's titties, jiggly titties. Sure, too. they're at, they're ass and titties. I saw like, there are know, thirteen year old head on the body. That's the that's <laughs> the kicker, right? <laughs> there are moments. There are moments, and I think I think specifically there are moments when you're like platforming or like shimmying across because there's a lot of like climbing on ledges and stuff. It, think it, as far as I can tell, this is structured a little bit kind of like a like a level in Devil May Cry because it's, it's kind of limited, kind of linear, but you can like branch off of pass and like climb up like like ledges and stuff to get to like treasure and then you kind of have to circle back around to go to the main path and progress or whatever but like you do a lot of like shimmying across ledges and like swinging on like like the pole vaulting shit stuff kind of tomb raider-esque but it doesn't look nearly as good as tomb raider um but like there are moments when she's like shimmying on a ledge and she's like hanging there where her her it looks like gravity is just trying to like pull her ass off of her body which is very weird looking. <laughs> like it looks like it looks like like it's like just her, elongating <laughs> it lo- while she's hanging. No, it looks yes, it's a, it's a it's like je- they're like jello molds, right? And they're just like yeah. slowly getting along. Like, like these games, they don't they don't move <laughs> like 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 the dead or alive extreme beach games from Team Ninja. Um, it's it's not well, like, like when the like, when a boob starts jiggling, it's like that's not what a boob. No <laughs> boob has ever moved like that. Like, is this supposed to be titillating? It's just alien. It's weird. To a fourteen-year-old, it <laughs> there, is. There are moments when, like, when she's like engaged in combat or like, just walking along, and the cameras behind her. It's like, yeah, her ass looks great. The moment there's just certain moments where it's like, uh, I don't think this is how. I don't, just don't think this is how asses, asses like work. It just has like full like, haptic feedback. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a little it's a little weird. It's a little off putting. Um. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of all I really have to say about this ass. game. You think <laughs> the skill tree sucks ass? Sucks. I bet it does. Well, I mean, it very well could be. Oh, Gamefly, when does this shit come out? I can't April even be bothered to play the demo. Yeah, clearly, uh, clearly, I'm I've the been one so Ronin pilled. I, 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 like, I've had this downloaded, and I'm like, Jesus. but I don't want to stop playing this. I can't. I like, can't like, stop. look at this monster that she's that's happening that she's fighting the footage. Like, it looks kind of cool, but it's kind of like it. It also somehow manages to also look very generic, but. I don't know. That's how I feel about everything in this game. It looks overproduced. Everything in this game looks super overproduced. And maybe that's not a terrible thing, I guess. But like, like, it just doesn't... Like, I can't... I, mean, I need to play more of it. Sucks. I need it's to... Okay, so. I don't even know. I mean, the it's over-designed. Like, everything is just over... I feel like... This, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I feel that way about a lot of, like, anime. <laughs> it's just like everything is designed... Oh, everything has to look okay. cool. Everything trying to has lose to some look, points, Nick? Yeah, trying to trying lose, to some, lose points. some points on your D- deduct some points. points from me, I guess. Um, I don't know. All anime I'm, looks I'm... like like overdesigned shit, is what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I said. All um, Japanese design. No, no, no. no. It, look, look, look. If look, someone look, look, look. from from uh, Japan or Korea in this case put pen to paper, then it's shit. Yes. Or pen- correct. Your pencil. To- that is exactly what I said. No, look, wow. look, bitch. Listen, this demo put this game kind of on my radar. Right, I had kind of. I had, you would side with Aloy, or like a <laughs> ugly Aloy, and an ugly Aloy in the 
There's line were, in the sand, Nick. I you know hope you're everybody, either on Aloy's side or whatever. Who's this character's name? What's her name? Eve is her name. You're on ugly <laughs> Aloy's side or, or beautiful Eve's side. You got to pick a side. I hope everybody listening at home recognizes that Brad's just being an asshole. <laughs> this is that? not. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have my eye on this game, which I didn't really expect. I was, I had pretty low expectations going into this. It's on my radar now. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna kind of wait and see how reviews shake out on this thing because it could still go either way. Uh, not but, trusted yeah. at all. This is the kind of game where like it wants to be like hardcore, like Sekiro. But like, it's not I feel like be people are just gonna get to a boss and and they're just gonna be like, "What the fuck, dude? This is not even remotely balanced." I, you know, I worry about those kinds of things, right? Like, this is a know. game about doing cool looking shit as a sexy lady with big weapons. Okay, that's what okay. this game is about, and that's yeah, what it the, seems to be pretty good at. Um, yeah, but it's like, but it's from the Nikkei. We we had. Bayonetta and Nier, which are like, you know, like created by like master action right. designers and master storytellers, and now we're just supposed to like lump this in with that? No, fuck no, that, dude. No, 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 no. This has this has a lot to prove before it can like sure. sit at that table, does. and people are treating it like it's 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 the same as that shit, and it's like I mean, look, again, we'll fucking we're, see. we're only talking we'll about a demo see. here. We're only yeah. talking about a demo here. I have uh, I have. I have no. I want to be proven wrong, but in, in my opinion, like this is a Liza P situation all over again. But like Liza P proved it's proved I know. pretty good, and I'm saying this game is gonna have to to prove it, you know, upon release. This game this can't just be a pretty that. ass, okay? It has to have some depth to the combat. That ass has so, some depth. That ass that has, has some depth. Yeah. <laughs> Like Anyways, uh, rip it with both hands and squeeze. That's what you're saying. No, and Chris Davis. <laughs> no, he crossed the line. Anyway. All, all I'm saying is that the best game. fantasy I don't know what game this is. league can is allow like is for this game to be a 65. Like, what is this shit? Is this like Y'all a are both talking at the thing? same time. No, I don't think it. Well, what is this game? I don't actually, know it might it be is. level based. It might be level, but it's not like a. It's not like no a one shoot. knows because people can't stop talking about the jiggle. Mm. Right. I mean, the demo lets you play, like, the opening moments of the game, and then it, like, gives you a title card, and then it jumps to, like, what is the first level. So, you know, I pr- I presume at th- at key moments in the story, it's going to end the level in, like, a big moment, and then it's just going to load into a new level. Like, that's kind of what I assume at this point. Um, it definitely, so. like, the, between, like, that intro sequence and when it switches from the title to the next level, like... It feels like a gameplay tone shift that I am. That doesn't excite me. That might me. just be for the sake. Of, that might be the sake for the sake of the demo. Like that might not be exactly how it plays out with the final game, but we'll see. It is definitely a tonal shift. It's definitely going from like super big, bombastic blockbuster looking shit to like it's a little Soulsian kinda, thing. Yeah, but it's not. It's definitely not Soulsian. It's there's no. nothing yeah. Soulsian about this game. There's Definitely. nothing Sekiro about. Well, maybe you know, maybe it's too early to say it's not There's like parries. taking some inspiration from Sekiro. Like Sekiro combat, it, invented the parry. You're right. I, well, first of all, no, sorry, you're not right. Like it didn't invent the parry, but it like it's definitely. The parry. It, it's definitely really parrying like is a huge part of the combat in this game. So there's definitely some inspiration there, but you know, it's really is, it's. Look at this! Look at this shot when she comes out of the 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 crashed. Uh, I don't. Uh, I've seen it. Escape I've seen pod it on it's Twitter. Just, okay, from all the horrible wait, bots, Nick. Let's let's. It's wild. It's wild. I mean, okay, it's kind of wild. Okay. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, Chris Davis, you had some Hello? words this week in Discord. You've been playing. You've been playing. I don't know we what they were exactly. The, you said some things. I I popped into Discord at one one point during the day just to kind of like see what was going on. I the made first thing a I joke was, that made you Brad made a, angry. <laughs> he said some shit about Unicorn Overlord and Brad. And Fire just... Emblem. If you're going to start talking shit about shit you don't understand, you better get your facts straight, motherfucker. I wasn't talking shit. I was making a joke. All right. But already All... Fire Emblem has this horrible Look. stigma of going like full waifu, and it's not even like accurate anymore. Like it was fucking one, maybe two games, and even that was overblown. <sighs> All I said was that in this, and I said clearly as a joke, 
that like Unicorn Overlord was a less horny version of Fire Emblem. That's all I said. Yes. That is the that is the statement that you made. Anyways, Neither are like, horny. Fi- this game is look, super not horny, by the way. Fire Emblem literally has a game about your you know mating characters to create children that come back to in time in the past it's to fight alongside game their about parents. Mating characters. That's not what it's about. It's about fucking <laughs> anyway, that was one game. It's it's a game about fucking Brad. Get over it. Okay, sorry. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to throw you under the bus there, Chris Davis. But you have been playing a bunch of Unicorn Overlord. I have. Um, so I've how's put that about going? thirty-five hours into it so far. Oh wow, Hot that's about, about how much I put into it. I've liberated <clears throat> two countries. I'm working Sounds on like the he knows more about now. it than you do. Did you do Drakenhold first, or what, yes? What? Okay. I mean, the, 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 based on the difficulty level they, they scale the game at, like you have to go to Drakenhold first. I hate that you call this game horny because this game is probably like outside of the actual like, like, you know, the art design of some of the lady characters. Right. Which is, you know, classic. Uh, what's his face? Uh, who does all the vanillaware art. Right? Um, this game's not horny at all. Like not even a little bit. It's just a fucking war I mean, there, story. So, some of the some of the lady like, characters are actively thirsting after Elaine, and Elaine is just one, completely ignorant and has no idea what they're talking about. Fucking one it's, it's character fun. is doing that really, and it's several. Like charming and several. cute. It's not even several, maybe you're further. I don't know. I spend yeah. most of my time in menus. Um <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is a menu real. heavy game, which is what yeah, difficulty I've, I've are you playing? Brad on, sees the, the Matrix code with, with these. What kinds difficulty of games. are you playing? I've been playing. I've been alternating kind of between normal and like the next step up. Like oh, I, God. I think even I, expert is too easy. You need to crank that shit way up. I mean, I I don't play strategy don't, and turn based games like listen, this. Don't listen to this fucker, Chris that Davis. I, Brad yeah. sees the Matrix code when he plays. How often are you like fucking this? with your gambits and stuff? Not as often as I probably oh, think I, I should. That's the but game. I have been Chris doing. Davis, that's the whole game. I've been doing. I do like significant periods in which I just stop the game for like half an hour and start messing with gambits with all the characters. Um, the itemization is so good. Yeah, yeah. No, there's. It is kind of shocking how much I'm enjoying this gambit stuff. Like I expected to go into this game and just like kind of do my best to not interact with that at all. And to be to the great wow. game's credit, like it allows you to do that. Do you have a that. history of that? Um like, like no, I really love it. Did no. you play like Final Fantasy 12 and never touch the gambits or something? Or did you... I played a little bit of 12 and bounced off it. I did not enjoy that game. Hmm. So I know I know that's weird. It's just it's who I am. Uh, so but like again to the game's credit, like it offers the flexibility to where you're getting skills at and abilities at regular pacing when you're leveling up your characters and it automatically filters that in at appropriate like activation levels to where I don't have to mess with that, but I can. So like, like with my cleric clerics, like when I'm figuring out healing processes and what the order of operations, like, yeah, I'm going in and I'm editing it to where instead of, you know, my character being below hundred percent, I'm doing it like 75 or even 50% to, Make it a worthwhile action. I don't need but to heal a character up, up like, all the like, way. Are you setting up like the kind of like Rube Goldberg like? Because you can you can get pretty crazy with like like this this character has a you know a item that makes sh- they go first in battle, but but they're the you know battle start effect on this item will trigger mm-hmm. so that this character mm-hmm. now has this can can cast this spell on this other character who now goes next and does this like you you could build like the all the the items and the a, and the ai the gambits or whatever to like set up just like a really something powerful, something like, legos or whatever or, like and, and and you know follow up attacks and and you know to like if you don't fuck with it all like your characters are gonna like hit once and the battle's gonna be over but if you set it up right mm-hmm. like you could just have it to where like fucking they're attacking like 12 times that's crazy yeah like if you really drill down like you can get Pretty fancy, I love especially it. when you gain the ability to start promoting soldiers to higher classes. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's when you open up a lot more possibilities, and it becomes a lot more fun. I think, um, because like when, wow. but when you have them in their base class and they have just like one action point and one passive point that they can use in combat, that's just their base level. Like, 
battles are over pretty quickly. Um, they get their turn, they move on. But like once you promote them and you start adding on these items that give them extra points and things like that, and you can just customize the gambit order that you activate stuff in, like, dude, these battles can become drawn out and very interesting to watch. Um, it's it's really it's really rewarding and satisfying. I think one of the strengths of this game is that like the the like it just looks good, right? <laughs> in battle, right? Like like the, the this character just in, design game looks and like good. <laughs> their move. Yeah, this is vanilla where game looks good, but like the, the these characters, you outfit them with all these cool abilities and weapons, and they're getting weapons that have abilities, and like when they're just doing their shit in battle, like those animations and stuff, just look fucking cool. Um, it's just, you know, so, so you're getting like a visually fancy payoff to like all the kind of work you're putting into, you know, the systems and the nitty gritty mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, I just, you know, I'm, I'm playing these games where like Ronin and Dragon's Dogma and stuff where like, like, okay, my, these characters, like, I guess I got a cool outfit, but like none of these motherfuckers look as badass as like some of my, these characters in Unicorn Overlord, which just look just it's a fucking cool looking game man i don't know uh, you know I, you know it's, it's funny skylar brought I, up I like how to... when i was kind of describing like ronin and what was good about like rise of the ronin in terms of like the open world and like that really addictive loop and everything is like quick and easy and you're 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 knocking out quests and kind of going and going and going like he compared like what i was describing with uh rise of the ronin to like how it was in unicorn overlord and that's true unicorn overlord is a very like like it's an open world, you know, game where you're like doing side quests and like, you're just churning through quests and everything. It's like easy to get around, especially once you promote your main unit and, and you're just kind of knocking out quests. It's easy to get around the map. And it's like very addictive, just kind of like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to deliver these supplies to this town and upgrade this town. So I can station a guard. Now I can like, you know, take a boat out to this other Island and I'm going to like get to this town and like, and like, drop drop, bring supplies to this town and like check this shop and i'm gonna go back here and check this merchant like it's just a very very addictive loop and they they make it really easy to kind of just go 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 like that loop is great like Um, on on the on the point of stationing guards i guess i don't quite see the benefit there so like so you you stationing guards will make it to where you you get more resources you get a uh, like passive resources or mm-hmm. resource points or response I, I can't actually remember um what it does yeah, it, but it'll get you a little bit of cash I, 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 and a little bit of resources but it, it takes a full day night cycle to activate that and the day yeah. night cycle is like half an hour long yeah like, but it, when it, you have like when, when you have like two whole countries of like stationed guards that's a lot of resources like if you go back and like deliver that stuff you're gonna get a lot of like points doing that well i i understand Um, it but the thing about it is that each region's items that you could accrue are proprietary to that region so like i can't save them up to use for another region so like it, it helps grind out um you know points you need to upgrade your units and army and stuff because you get uh, honors and stuff for completing those delivery quests. And now you don't even have to run around to like get all this stuff. They'll just kind of get it for you. Yeah, it's just yeah, I, I wish that it was more s- substantial in amount, the amount that you actually get. Yeah, I uh, mean, but I mean, you don't, it doesn't cost anything to station a guard. Uh. No, I mean, it doesn't. And to, to that other thing is that with a guard, I wish there was more gameplay uh, implications by stationing a guard there. Like, I wish it was a scenario where I have to worry about an enemy counterattack trying to come take the town and yeah, I mean, yeah, I things know. like that, it's but cool. that's, that's not a thing in this. I, I did want to ask I you. I love just the, the team, team comp stuff in this game. Yeah. Just fucking with team comps, man. Like sometimes, cause I'll, I'll like test my team comps on like AI, you know, like the little challenges you do where if you, if you kill them, you get like 2000 gold or whatever, but yeah. just against, against my, my, my own team. And like, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll put a team together and I'll throw them up against a couple of my like squads. And I'm like, ah, man, this just shit ain't working out. But then I'll, I'll do it against a couple, like a couple of other squads in my army. And I'm like, oh no, like this, this team just fucking obliterated like this other team. That's like, I, I basically just found like a, like a good counter to like this type of squad and this type of squad. And I just love kind of dicking around and tooling with all that stuff. My, it's so good only big complaint with the game 
is that it's not exact because there are so many fucking classes in this game. Like yeah. it feels like most of the main characters like have their own proprietary class for a lot yeah. of them. I I wish that the game was more informative of what classes are useful against what, what other classes like you have to go. If you don't remember the tutorial for that, that character, you have to go into a glossary index to find out what they're good against. Otherwise, like you will deploy them to the battlefield mm. and like you just kind of have to swap them out to figure out what is the appropriate uh, counter to the enemy that you're about to fight. What do you mean? All that stuff is like pretty. I mean, you just look at their skills like, you know, well, what does this thief do? Well, he has true strike so he can hit dodgy stuff or whatever. Right. And he has evade so he can he can evade tank. I mean, like it's not. Well, what what I'm saying is I mean, that I guess I, they, they do get more complicated, but but it's it's not everything. I just pretty, I just wish that I didn't like, have you don't to go need into a glossary a to tell you what they're sh- what they're good at. I wish I didn't have to go into a mini to find that out the information is what I'm saying. I wish I mean, that this is this I could look like a at a character's like screen and it tells me exactly what I need to know. This sounds like a scenario just because I mean I feel like a lot of this this knowledge, especially for someone like Brad who plays a lot of these games, is just kind of like drilled into you. So like. I feel like I would be having the same kind of struggles as Chris Davis if I had tried to play this game because a lot of that oh, stuff yeah, just, just isn't as obvious to me. About, really. But yeah, yeah. I mean, here nor there. I mean, yeah, the, the the one other minor complaint that I would say is that this game has too many characters. Um, like I've got like sixty at this point, and I'm still I'm still I just it, it almost, now entering the third third country. Like it's it's nuts. It don't, it's got. It, it almost seems like, um, like a game that should have had permadeath because of how many characters. Yes. You, get, you know what I mean? Like a Fire Emblem. Because in a Fire Emblem game, you would get a lot of fucking characters, but you know, it's it's with the designed with the idea <laughs> that some of them might die. You know. Yeah. Um, which you know, kind of more modern Fire Emblem games kind of pull back on that, of course. Uh, and, but and I do appreciate yeah, like weird. other than like the the recruits I don't care. that I, you get. Th- there's so many good ladies. The thing is, to me. I don't run, run, run so with any of the dudes, really. I don't really run with the dudes. I mean, sometimes, I mean, there's useful classes that are, I guess, dude exclusive. Um, but for the most part, like, my squads are, are mostly, like, badass ladies, which is fucking cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand that. Uh, have you gotten to the third country? Uh, Bastaria? No, no, no. No, 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 not yet. You're going to like Bastaria. They start throwing things at you that are... The elven twists uh, on the classes, uh, classes and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, what no, a I'm twist! Familiar. I'm familiar. I'm familiar. I, I, I will slow play this game. It, I, the time I spend playing this game will be twice as long as yours. I promise. Um, well, I'm certain because <laughs> it know, will just take him four times. When I got to the point where I could promote units, that was like hard stop for me. This is going to be hours of me thinking about this shit because yeah. that's just how my brain works. Yeah, um, it's it's a transformative moment when you can start promoting your classes. I haven't moved since I got to the point where I could promote. I haven't even moved. I I got to a a uh, a fort to where I can test out, do mock battles and stuff, and I have not moved since then. And that's where he lives um, now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I understand lives. that. It's, like, mm. it's uh, yeah. it's cool really beans. good. I I did. And I'm sorry, ask you. the story is not like that good because it ain't no thirteen sentinels. But uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the gameplay. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. It's I did not come into this expecting 13 Sentinels depth to the story. I just expected it a good story. And so far, like, it's all right. I am i don't have really any complaints about it so far. I guess. I mean, it's an evil empire that literally is brainwashing it's, all it's the characters. Not... And after every, like, little story moment, it's like, oh, you were brainwashed. But, like join the rebellion they're like okay and then it gives you yeah. a choice do you want to kill them or let them join the rebellion well like why would i kill them they were brainwashed by a clearly evil empire and now they're like not brainwashed anymore yeah yes, i'm not, they're gonna I'm not join seeing... my army and i'm it's... gonna get a cool new character they're they're yeah, tracking so the big. answers and putting people on a list if they can yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm, not, I'm not seeing like, like the the benefits of the binary decisions that you have when it comes to no, recruiting characters not even close not even close. Unless they all of a sudden have Dragon's Plague or something, I'm pretty sure there's no choice to actually make there. Yes, join yeah. my team. You're you're the you're the sister of a character already on my team, and you were brainwashed by an evil like magical force. Yeah. Should should you kill this person or let him join you? 
Like, uh, hmm, but tough. also, like, to be fair, like, where I'm at in the story, like, there's more depth now to, like, what that means. So... Uh, so, okay. keep, so keep okay. playing. Well, I, keep hope, playing. I, I hope it does really some good. stuff there. I I know there's one character that you know joined. You know, was clearly a bad dude who just decided to join my team and like, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Glad you're enjoying it. Glad yeah, you're enjoying a Brad Overlord. game. Davis. <laughs> yeah. You did pay a lot of money for it. Anyways, moving right along. <laughs> Glad I paid for it. Uh, unless y'all have any objections, I think mm-hmm. it's time to wrap up with the four player minute. Cool. Final thoughts for the week, Brad. You care to start us off? Sure. I got. I, got, I prepared something here. Sure, I you wanted did. to talk a little bit about Final Fantasy 16. Actually, oh no, because I was listening to a podcast and I learned some things um, that I didn't know. So that, I know there's like the DLC coming out with Leviathan yep. or whatever, and like I was like, well, I clearly don't give a shit because I don't like that game, and I stopped playing, um, you know, so much of the way through, whatever. But Mm -hmm. I heard some shit. I heard some shit. That part of this update, they are going to do two things that I've been... That one, I've been begging for since launch. And and the other one is just like, wow, that might be enough to get me back, actually. Which is something I... Tell me more. The first one is they finally, finally are letting you completely rebind all the controls. Which... When it first launched, I'm like, this is horseshit. They need to fix this. And, it, and eventually they released a patch pretty quickly that added like two more control schemes, but it wasn't right. It was like you added, you 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 kind of fixed it, but you fucked it up on these other control schemes. They're actually finally, after all this time, letting you just actually rebind the controls, which is huge because I kind of always resented the combat because I know it could have been so much better if... The, this button was here and that button was there or whatever, you know, and they just wouldn't let you do it. So that's huge for me. Um, but it's been so long. I don't even remember exactly what it was about it, but I bet if I turned that game on, I would have, you would know be, very quickly like, frustrated. It was de- something to do with like the way you like cycle through or cha- or triggered your icon abilities. It, like you couldn't have them one on a face button and one on a shoulder or something like that. But anyways, the other big thing is they're introducing a quick complete for quests where if after a quest, a little side quest or whatever, you can hit a button to be instantly teleported back to the quest giver to just turn it in. So no I more feel like, like that's like admitting that you did a bad job at designing your of side Of course quests. they're admitting it. Of course they're admitting it because they did do a bad job. Yeah, and they, and I they, totally yeah. agree. But like that's fucking huge because it wasn't so much that you had to go back to like talk to these people to turn in these quests. It was that your home base was like this fucking, especially the one halfway through the game was a fucking nightmare to navigate. It was fucking terrible. I never wanted to like go from, you know, do you remember this shit, Nick? Like the one on the desert where it's like, you have to go talk to this character. Who's now on uh, like for whatever reason, really in terms of game space, probably like 30 feet away, but I have to like, go 200 feet around like you know bullshit to like get to them oh i fucking hated it so now that i can just like go from like completing a quest out in the world to just teleport back to NPC, huge that's got to cut game changer so much fucking game time that's probably get, would cut 10 hours off that fucking game yeah i wish i had that of that game so that would have turned my, my 80 enough. that would have turned my 80 things. hour playthrough into a 60 hour playthrough probably <laughs> Those things Fuck. might be enough to get me to go back and finally finish that game up because it was just not fun and tedious. It was it was tedious and not fun, and it was and the game wasn't like, you know, lighthearted and breezy enough like Rebirth, honestly, to make it worth it. I kinda wish they were already thinking about things they can do for Rebirth to make that stuff a little more streamlined because, you know, one of the things I've been thinking about while playing Rise of the Ronin is just how much the game is just not getting in the way of itself. Just fucking yeah. go, 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 do, do, do. And Rebirth is just like the opposite of that, right? It's dated, but it also has that like tedium of like, oh my God, why is this taking so fucking long? Oh man, yeah. So I maybe, agree. You know, maybe in a year, Rebirth will be a much better game as well. But you know, Rebirth. Rebirth. I think Rebirth. I think the so. journey. I think Rebirth has much less to do. With I that gotta regard. say though, like Dragon's Dogma and like everything really is just kind of like fucking sucked all the air out of the room on that one i feel as well i mean i know people playing some people finished it but like our discord went fucking 
that channel is ready to go to the graveyard i think already <laughs> and i think a lot of people are not even done with it i mean no now that i've finished persona it. that's kind of where i'm shipped i mean i'm gonna be going back and forth between dragon's dogma 2 and wow. rebirth but since i've already sunk so much time into rebirth like I it's wow. it's kind of I, at some point I have yeah, at some point I can see Dragon's Dogma it, slip away listen, from you, Nick. No, it won't, dude. Listen, at some point you have to make a decision. Like, and I'm and I want to play both of these games, but like if I keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on on them, neither one of them will ever be done. Play that's kind of why at some Ronin, point Nick. that's play that's, that's why Ronin. that's why at the same that's why I ended up making the decision. It's like I want to be playing Dragon's Dogma two. I want to be playing Rebirth, but I'm gonna stop. So I can play, sink all my time into Persona Three and take it across the finish line, and that's what I did. So I'm gonna probably end up doing kind of the same thing with Rebirth here pretty soon. Although I want to give myself a few days to like really delve back into Dragon's Dogma because I do want to play more of that and get farther. But at some point, you are gonna you are gonna get around to Days Ronin though, right? Yeah, I'm gonna wait for a sale. Like I said, like like alone in the hey, dark. Points. I'm gonna Remember, wait for you get two sale. points for finishing Days Ronin. Two points. Oh, two points? shit! Why didn't you? Say you need so? points. I mean, I don't know where else you're gonna get those points from, dude. I'm not sure. worried at all. First, you got four for Persona, one for Rebirth, and what? How much? Dragon's, Dragon's Dogma, Dogma two. Is... You tell me. Dragon's Dogma is two. So you, you're at you uh, made this point seven so points, what are you right? You're at about? seven points. You yeah. still got. You still need three more points. I still need three it? more points, dude. You ain't I, playing that Princess Peach game, so what the fuck? Well, do you no, I'm, play? I'm not worried about. I'm not gonna get it from Princess Peach. Don't There's you only worry, so much dude. on this list, dude. If Deca Police comes out this year, it's over. If Deca Police comes, comes out, out this year, Deca Police. If that game comes you, out this year, I. What about Deca Police makes you think that that game is for you, dude? I love level five. What are you talking and about? Cops. You love and level cops. five. Okay. I love level five and fucking cops. We're seeing it. I don't know. I don't think you love fucking cops. I love fucking cops. I'm sorry. Uh, oh my god. Anyways, well, you you gonna play through Metaphor? No, probably not. No. Um, wow. You hate Persona Three, dude. You're I not even a Persona per- fan. This could be the last Shin Megami Tensei game you play, dude. I already said that as Oof. much. Like, I don't know if I have I another Persona happy, game dude. in me. Literally I love- every every other person on the planet who's finished a Persona game has a Persona tattoo of Chie or whoever the fuck their waifu is. And you're like, I don't even think I'm going to play that fucking metaphor game. That's Dude, crazy. listen to me. Listen to me. I really am happy that I played Persona 3 and I finished it. I'm glad I can finally say I finished a Persona game. But I don't know if I have another Persona game in me. because like I got Paper Mario? Yeah, I might play Paper Mario. We'll see. I've never huh. played the original, so like... It's well, this ain't very the original. possible. Well, this I know, is it's the, a remake of an original. Oh. What are you talking about? Like, if, I'm saying that might be my first oh. time playing Thousand Year Door. Huh. Okay. You get two points right. for that. I know. Well, I, like two I said, points. Bro, I really? I'm not worried. Anyways, hmm. let's talk. Let's let's two. pass it over to Crispy. Crispy, what are your final thoughts for the week? Oh, I don't know. Um, just a lot of Dragon's Dogma Two stuff, which we covered. Um, still playing Overwatch. They Overwatch. they previewed the new hero. It's this uh, person named Venture who has a drill can like dig underground. It's kind of fun, kind of cool. Um, Did that uh, get into that Marvel Rivals? Yeah, I was about to say that Marvel Rivals oh, thing. Get dude, your I don't know about that. that <laughs> That looks like a oh. bridge too far. I don't know. You've been watching X Men ninety seven? We haven't talked to Crispy. I don't in a while. have a I don't have a I don't have a This is turning into Ask Crispy. Uh, no, oh I, I don't have a I don't have a Disney Plus account at the moment, so I have not Dude, been watching. I started watching it. Cyclops immediately lame. Immediately lame. Just perfect. This, don't fall, don't take the bait. Don't hit the bait, Crispy. Just Okay. Don't do it. Put, just push it down. Just push it down. Okay, I know. I know Look, where his. He, he, I know. I know where his ignorance comes from. It's okay. Okay. No, that's fine. He can. He can read a million comic books, but we all know that fucking animated series, uh, Cyclops sucks ass. And I'm just glad that he's back and continues to suck ass. Oh man, that fucking. A bit where he's like falling out of the plane and uses his optic blast to land. That was pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. All right, the I only have a thing for it. Cyclops has ever been cool in is Marvel vs. Capcom, the first of the series. Now that Cyclops is cool. Which movie was it? Which movie was it where like him and 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 Logan are like? It's it's the one where he's like, "Prove it's you," and he's like, "You're a dick," and he's like, "Okay." Do you, you know what movie I'm talking uh, about? Which X Men movie? I'm talking about? 
X Men One or Two. Was it? The, I don't know. How Whatever much movie did, that was? That was pretty. How cool. much did uh, what's his face set back Cyclops? Uh, James Ryan Marsden. Singer? No, James Marsden. <laughs> James Marsden wasn't the problem. Uh, yeah, I thought James Marsden was a fine Cyclops. James Marsden okay. wasn't the problem. Those scripts and Brian Singer. I mean, and whoever did. Brian Singer, like, is the one who decided to fucking kill him off, like, five minutes into have, the third movie. Have y'all yeah. seen that show it's that so James Marsden was in that, that he, that I think he was nominated for an Emmy Westworld. for? No, no, no. Recently, where it's like a, it's like a faux uh, reality show where it's like, the, 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 there's only one person on the show who. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I watched that whole God. thing. Jury Duty? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Listen, it. Was jury like, Duty? Dude, yeah, that's it was like the Joe Schmo show. That, yeah. My favorite part, okay, my favorite part of that show is <laughs> there's James like Martin a. clogs the toilet? No, 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 no. There's like an older guy on the jury and he like never talks to the to the main guy to the guy who thinks it's all real except for one time they're in a meeting and he's like uh he like gets up and he squeezes by the guy and he's like oh he's like hey let me get you by let me get by you here i'm he's like yeah i'm gonna go to the bathroom and jerk off uh and then he (laughs) dies and and everyone else in the jury is like sitting around sharing like all these like memories of like all the nice things he said to them and like how cool he was and they all have these like really sweet stories where they connect with him and they're like asking him like oh did he ever say anything to you you have anything to say about him you ever say anything to you and they just keep cutting back to the clip of him being like yeah i'm gonna go fucking I'm gonna go fucking blast one off in the bathroom. And and he never says it. He never tells him that he said that. Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> Nick, you watched oh that god. show? Robin watched it and I caught a lot uh, of it. I watched I, was say, I watched I the whole you're, thing. You're, it was good. Be cringing. It was great. It was great. It Dude, was so good. But like that's now that's the first thing I think of now when I think of James Marsden. Not not X Men. That's nothing true. Else that definitely that. like raised his uh <laughs> His I mean, stock the whole, level in the, the whole thing stock with, market. with him being an alternate and like like being kind of you know it feels like he's like losing the spotlight like is so fucking funny. <laughs> uh, Dude, it was so good. I love that. I I really love that show. I don't. I know it's not usually the thing that I I oh, bring up or I watch, but man, that was Sonic really good. the Hedgehog's dad. Sorry. Nah, we don't talk about the Sonic movie. We don't talk about that. Don't, um, don't believe that. that what, about the, what about the, what about the, like, I just made that connection. Nine part Knuckles. These are shit movies. The Knuckles TV show. <laughs> oh, man, this no. has gone off the rails. Uh, last shit question movies. for you, Chris don't, don't, don't believe their lies. Last what movies have you, I seen recently? No, uh, what, I what watched Late that? Night with the Devil. I watched. Oh, oh is, that, is that out? Oh, it's in Yeah, theaters. I watched Late Night with the Devil. I watched. Dream I scenario. Oh, I watched that's good. Wonka. Yeah, I like that a lot. Oh, I didn't oh. watch that. Come I watched. On. Boo. Dude, <laughs> Wonka what? is way better than it should be. Hmm. Like Wonka's not bad. Dream scenario was. was Dream bad. scenario is a weird fucking movie. Yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> oh, that's that Nicholas Cage and, one, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's so okay. like. Yeah. I it takes know. a dark turn, man. I mean, <laughs> I the that. whole yeah, the whole thing's pretty dark like yeah i don't know the the scene like with the it. girl like from the unbreakable kimmy schmidt like when he goes to her apartment is so just like awful mm. I <laughs> like i hate it, it. I <laughs> it. <laughs> um yeah that's everything i've seen recently okay late night with the devil right. was okay i feel like i I don't know. I feel like they gave up the game in a couple of the trailers a little too much. Like for a movie that yeah, doesn't really have any twists or surprise, like to show them off in the trailers. Kind of I actually stopped watch watching the trailer about halfway through it because I got that. I was starting to get that vibe. Yeah, more and more, just turn off trailers. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, you know, Late Night with the Devil also does that weird thing. I couldn't stop thinking about, but it, it does that office, like the office thing where it is ostensibly supposed to be a documentary but it immediately like ignores that framing by mm. like having camera people everywhere and having them like getting fly on the wall shots of like conversations that like they just definitely wouldn't be getting you yeah, know you just got to forget like, the framing I, yeah i know i know i know i i think i think david what's his name that's david? been the problem of found footage films for like a long time yeah right? yeah 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 um, I mean that's a that's a classic. It's it's a it's a classic 
classic pitfall. I don't know. Uh, it was good. It wasn't great. It was good. Hmm. That's interesting. I've heard really good things about it. I'm going to go see that here soon. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure a bunch of horror perverts are into it, but like... Yeah, yeah. For whatever. Sure. That's me. Like... Boom. Horror pervert. All right. Passing it over to Chris Davis. Mid-drink. Noted What's not your... horror pervert. Um, not a, yeah, alone in the dark true. fan. That's not, not true, Mister Alone in the Dark. For some weird reason, I, I'm glad that that David guy, David Thatch, I don't know what his last name is, but I'm glad that he's like becoming a star because he's just yeah. kind of like a weird guy. <laughs> like he just <laughs> looks weird and the star plays late weird night characters. The oh, the star. Yeah, he is kind of sort of an odd looking fella. He's, he looks like someone who'd be famous in the '60s. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> which is which makes him perfect for late night with the devil. Yeah, yeah. sorry. All uh, right, Chris Davis. Sorry. No, you're good. It's fine. Um, I guess just my four player minute. I'm splitting in half. Um, the first is that I'm proselytizing the the word of Godzilla X Kong. That movie is very fun. Mm. I'm going to see it tomorrow night with my dad for his birthday. Yeah, uh, cool. uh, and then this I might go see birthday, it again one right? more time. Because it's going to be at the IMAX, and uh, how often do you get that opportunity? So, um, fun movie! It's a really fun movie. Worth worth going to see. Um, it's no minus one, but it's fun. Hey, it's out doing uh, Dune Part Two. So, oh yikes! Like yeah. like like, are we talking like out doing the- this last weekend? <laughs> Yeah, I must say there's a difference. It's not. I don't think it's gonna like. Top, I think the the overall box office numbers are not going to land in oh. Godzilla's favor on that one. But uh, yeah, uh, it, the international box office is really strong, actually. Uh, 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 I'm just saying, like uh, this movie well, is doing actually, really well. Uh, 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 <laughs> Whatever, fine. We'll fuck see. Off. We'll see about. That. We'll see about that. Anyways. <laughs> Fun movie. Oh, no! Wow. So who, who um, wins in the fight? Can you see Proceeding it? despite that tomato score. I'm just huh? kidding. Wow. Yeah. I mean, how many... That happens all the fucking time. Uh, the other thing Don't I want to mention is that um, is my gaming time, when it's not been Unicorn Overlord, has been devoted to Helldivers 2. Um, they launched a new patch today, which a lot of good things, a lot of nerfing stuff that I'm not... I don't appreciate... Here's the thing about Arrowhead, this developer, is that Uh, they release quality patches, but they release new content without telling people about it. Mm, And so like and and they play it into like the the overarching narrative of the universe. Like Mm. any rumors that are coming out are like are like heretical to democracy. You know, they're they're the words of traitors when they talk about this stuff. So like several weeks ago, they revealed like the flying bugs, which but they are, denied their existence. They denied their existence like fully in universe. It was hilarious. Um, I hated those. And then today they launched uh, this new patch and people discovered there's two new robot enemies to fight. One of which is a fucking ATAT, uh, and it's gigantic and I hate it and I can't wait to fight it. Oh, oh cool. but this game is so fucking good. It is, it is pretty good. It's pretty it good. I, I, I definitely want to find time to squeeze more of that. And even though I know in the grand scheme of things, I won't end up playing a ton of it. I would I would love to play a little bit more of it because it was that was a grand old time. Yeah. And like the other week. And, the, and their their audience is like in love with the PR and marketing that they have going on with this game. Like the 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 studio had Joel. I don't even know his fucking last name. Everyone just calls him Joel. Like he will pop into the, into games and he will say, I've got to get back to work. And he'll just like release a strategy for un- unreleased content, like a fucking APC, something that's not in the game. He'll just drop it in for the players to play with and just leave. Hmm. Just like having fun with the community like that. That's that sounds like he's having fun with he's growing drunk on power is what he's, <laughs> that's what he's doing. I'll tell you what, Joel, like, come on, man. Come on. Nerf the fucking robots. They're insanely tough on higher difficulty levels. I'm going to be honest. Helldivers 2 is getting a little clicky for me. Little clicky? Yeah, it's getting a little culty. Little. C- <laughs> I can see that. I can see that becoming a thing, too. That's for sure. Yeah, that means All right. Good. Also, uh, one last thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, 
Brad, you might be interested in this. I don't know if you saw the news today, um, but evidently the developers for Dead Cells are hmm. rumored to be working on a Prince of Persia game. Oh, fuck what? you, dude. I don't give... what. Okay. I thought you were going to say Castlevania. But no, you hit me with Prince of Persia, which might have been okay, except we just got a really good Prince of Persia. Yeah. So like, why would they give Prince of Persia away again after like, why, they just made one of the, the best last Prince of Persia games? I need right now. Let them do a Castlevania game. Somebody. Let somebody do a fucking Castlevania. For the love of God, game. somebody save Castlevania. Prince of Persia? Like, I'm good. I'm good on Prince of Persia right now. Pass. Okay. I hate to say it. <laughs> All right, Fuck. All right. My four player happen. minute starts now. My final yeah, thoughts. Really. My final thought starts now. Um, ooh, we're talking about movies. I haven't... I, there's a lot of stuff I want to see, including Late Night with the Devil. But I did go see Immaculate on Good Friday. <laughs> Oh. Unintentionally, um, ooh. Ooh. I have no idea. That, that was fun. <laughs> uh, huh? I don't know what that is. The the the, the new like Rosemary's Baby. Sid- the new movie oh. is Sydney Sweeney. Um, horror I don't movie. Know who that is. <laughs> okay. Wow, I don't know what to tell you, Brad. Uh, look up Sydney oh. Sweeney. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Uh, look up Immaculate. The movie was... A nun gets uh, pregnant without having sex. Whoa. There we, there we go. Uh, and it's... Very, very, very... I, we, love, we, we really loved uh, that movie. And uh, I think Sydney Sweeney just... She did a lot to like sell herself as like a f- great... like. Wh- final girl for this like generation of horror films it was some like the last scene in particular of that movie i was like god damn this is wild you're gonna uh, go see you're gonna go see late night with the devil we're going to see monkey man on friday oh. uh and then we have family in town next week and th- they're they're gonna have kids with them and one of their birthdays so we're gonna go and see, see ghostbusters that? again who is and then what, the week after that Sydney sweeney in? i watched uh, once upon a time in hollywood she was in that she was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Was she? I mean, I'm just looking at the list of shit um, she's in because I haven't seen any. Of this well, I was stuff. gonna say if you like if you like Late Night with the Devil, you should mm-hmm. look up Ghost Watch, which was this like live television event that broadcast on the BBC in the 90s. Oh, I heard Ooh. about this. That is <laughs> like it is essentially. Late night with the devil, like okay. it is. It, it is. I'd be down, but to check but that they out. broadcast it on like national television as like a real thing and like traumatized a bunch of British kids for life. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it's so good. That sounds sick. Uh, also, Brad Sydney Sweeney is in uh, Madam Web. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. What the <laughs> fuck are you? Uh, Sydney okay. Sweeney I'm, okay. is Madam Web. You know Sony's. Spider-Man's Madam Web. <laughs> Anyways, um, I do highly. I, all I'm saying is I highly recommend Immaculate. It was pretty good. Uh, and on the gaming side of things, um, I finished. Like I said, I finished Persona Three, and I, I finished it kind of like midday. And it was like it, it. That game drained. It drained a lot, just for my will to play games that day. And I was look. I was like, what could I do? It's just like I don't want to dive into sling really deep like dragon's dogma or final fantasy 7 rebirth right now i just want something kind of light and Dude. uh easy dragon's dogma uh, and i awesome. did i just randomly started replaying bioshock oh, uh, oh no because reason. you watched that fucking you watched the trailer for what's it called for it, judas? Was no, no, no. it was all like no, 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 no. Levine. <laughs> hey we talked about judas last week but that's not really why uh, i mean I, I i picked up the bioshock collection like, uh, a couple months ago and been meaning to to replay it um i specifically am really interested in replaying bioshock 2 but i wanted to replay all three of them uh and i don't know i'm just like it, it, i'm playing dead. through it now i'm playing through it now and i'm just like first of all we now li- i now live in a post like uh, for me system shock remake world which was on my top 10 last year and like obviously now i kind of see the stark differences between system shock and bioshock but i can see the dna there right and um i prefer system shock but bioshock uh as a shooter and just kind of as a uh as a vibe. Just, 
as a vibe it's just so fucking cool man it just, just made me think it just, just made me think to... that bioshock 4 has been rumored for so long and, I, and it's like bioshock it's all 4. but confirmed it's all but confirmed we even think we know what studio's working on it it's crazy well we've, so we've like, known I'm what just... studio's working on it for years but i know mm. but like i know that's my that's my point <laughs> i'm just kind of like play bioshock is sort of like a to get the Japanese game funk off of you, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. really had to get the stink off. Get back into that Western yeah. vibe. Man, you need some uh, Western games. Yeah. Well, real, real something... quick, Nick, regarding Bioshock specifically, maybe hold uh-huh. off for a while because one of the games from the Nvidia leak was a RTX remaster of Bioshock. Well, so... I mean, it's too late now. Well, like three Nick hours doesn't know what that it. means. So. <laughs> I am three hours into the original Bioshock. Believe me, if they release some kind of like dramatic like revision or remake of Bioshock one, of course I'll play it. I don't, I don't think that's going to change. Um, this is, this remaster is just a nice cleaned up version of the original. So it's great. It's been great going back to it. it just got me kind of thinking and wishing that Bioshock didn't just kind of like quietly disappear after Bioshock infinite. Um, so I'm, I'm oh, hoping maybe quiet. this is the year. They laid off the entire studio. That's okay. Okay. You're right. Sorry. Yeah. Quiet was not the right word, but um, I just hope that Bioshock as a series uh, comes back sooner rather than later because it's 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 a cool vibe. It's a really cool vibe. Um, so we'll see. But anyways, yeah. that's it. That's all I've got. That's our show. Um, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to everyone watching us live on twitch.tv slash 4 podcast and four pl- or youtube.com slash four player Something. network. I don't <laughs> Just go to our website. The link's there. It's on the screen. <laughs> I, it's true oh yeah you're right it is on the screen wait no it's not no, anyways it's not. discord.gg slash four player is the place to be if you want to be a part of our community hang out talk about games talk about movies talk about whatever the fuck we even have a great channel where people can just share pictures of their pets and it's super active so if you need to look at some 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 fur babies go in there it's great it's a great place it's just, great it's for just your a mental shame health. that nick doesn't post more in there I hey when I post pictures in that channel they're fucking bangers okay they they are but you post it one every six months yeah but they're bangers when they do so anyways uh guys thank you so much for tuning in again next week uh not sure what the plan is yet but it might end up being a game night or a trailer talk night or something we'll keep you posted in Discord um but if that goes according to plan or lack of plan or whatever you want to call it then. Uh, Our next episode will probably be in two weeks. But again, we'll keep you posted. So in the meantime, guys, be good to each other. Play video games. Good night. Bye.